Where do I start? They say life imitates art. I'm trying to paint a picture. Paint a picture that's licking you scripture. I ain't just another nigga. Another nigga with a dream, it seems we finally made him all believe. A dream to be the reason we come to achieve. The life that we would all kill for, even die for. High score, high score, so sick, so sick. Oh shit. Sick and tired of these little kids talking grown shit. I don't even... <clears throat> you guys don't gotta talk. I was just waiting on you. <laughs> oh shit. Now. Are we supposed to say like that in response? Like you don't. Don't let me just talk by myself. Well, see, now I know headphones is weird. I know it is a little. Mm. It's a little different. But we have Ear the nudity. We have the <laughs> Ear. right to it, eh? Right to the nakedness. Obviously. Oh, oh. <laughs> the power of the Lolo. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Dwayne. What's up? How you doing? I'm tired, man. I'm tired. <laughs> Are we surprised? No, I mean, yeah, tired used to be a way of life for me, but now I try not to wear that as a badge of honor anymore, you know, like just, but I am just being real. Are you sick? Yes. What kind well, of drugs you, you sound like this. I was sick, but I'm on the mend, technically. The so, what? On the mend. See, on I the can't mend. even speak. Uh, uh, like I'm getting mend. better. I'm getting better. Mend. Is on that the mend. a Bermudian thing? You never people don't say mend? that here. Yeah, on the mend. No, that's a regular. I never heard that yeah. before. <laughs> that's a not, not a Scotian thing. enough. Apparently, not Scotian <laughs> enough. that's not a <laughs> not a thing. That's not a thing. Damn, yo, we sound really good, <laughs> but I won't lie. Not having headphones, is making my my ear experience seem different. But guess what? The listeners get to listen to our beautiful mm. voices through. Surround sound and Beautiful bass and mind. shit. Cause you, go. No, but you know what it is? Like the headphones, it feels like you're plugged right into the internet. Yeah. I feel like, like I can hear the fridge right now. Yeah, like you can't <laughs> like you're, just, you're blocked out almost and it's yeah. like I feel like I'm speaking right to the people. Right. Now I don't even feel like we're recording. That's is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. It's just a thing. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. It's it's, just different. it's but you know what? We're, it's called latency. Okay. If Peter and I had hung out like we were supposed to. Yeah. Because b- before, like when we first, first started recording and Peter was here, Peter did all the right. audio stuff. So I didn't have to learn none of that shit. And then we got new shit. And then I didn't know how to fix the thing that Peter fixed. Yeah. And so it's still broken. Have you asked Peter? I asked Peter. We were supposed to do it, but then... He I, still doesn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> when we recorded our thing, it had like a latency thing, so we just took the earphones out too. Well then, I need to do some more YouTube. You know, like, here's the problem though is with YouTube. Like, yeah, YouTube is great until you can't figure some shit out and you really just want to talk to a person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's I no- hate when someone tells me, like, if I ask a question, someone says, just Google it. Because I'm always like, yeah, no, I get that I could do that, but I would like to actually have a conversation with someone. With a human out. being. Yeah. Like, anytime someone says, just Google it, I'm like, I'm done with you I don't want any of this. <laughs> you guys don't hear this this voice on the microphone it's a new man on the microphone but he's part of the team you've been part of the team we just don't have a website yet that <laughs> i'm working on it we've talked about mike <laughs> quite we just don't a have bit. a website up yet damn it it's mike, mike tanner <laughs> it's mike tanner on the microphone folks he, welcome sir he's, he's got Thank a you. podcast addiction uh, yeah. Like a recording podcast yeah. addiction. I have, don't, a, I have a problem. Don't you record <laughs> podcasts in your car with your earbuds? Mm-hmm. I, I switched from using a regular pair of headphones, but then every time I try to switch gears, I rip the headphones out of my ear and almost crashed. So now I got a pair of AirPods. <laughs> so I do my, all my podcasting is done with a pair of AirPods, whether I'm in Safety the kitchen, first. Or in the car, Safety first. whatever. Obviously. That's efficient. What's your podcast called? Which one? Well, damn it. Plug all your shit then, mister. So, which one? So, uh, my main podcast, the one that I do the most, is called Riding in Cars with Cats, which started because I was literally just driving around talking, and then I occasionally record a phone call with somebody else and stuff like that. I also have a podcast called Mostly Spoilers, which is when I sit down with a friend of mine and just, basically, we just argue about Star Wars and Shonda Rhimes and board games and whatever else. Uh, and then I'm in the midst of my new podcast. Chomp, chomp. Which is um, tentatively titled "You Say Potato, I Say Potato," and it is a <laughs> podcast. All I'm about, in already. It's a podcast all about potato chips. Uh, because I actually woke up from a dream. I'm not gonna. 
<laughs> there's going to be no ASMR in the whole thing. So I woke up from a dream <laughs> where I was the host of this podcast called Chip Off the Old Block. And I like went on Twitter and was like, oh man, I'm the host of this chip podcast in my dream. Ha ha ha. And, and then Twitter like, was like, you have to have a potato chip. So now I've just decided I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Do so it. that's going to be my third one. So this going to be like history of it's going to be all chips, these things, Lauren. All these things. Flavors. And we're going to do like the word crisps. reviews. Cri we're going to talk about crisps. We're going to talk about cheesies. Oh. I want to come what on and review some shit. You can absolutely go. So we're going to do a combination Snatch. of like what's your favorite potato chip and why, what's the best barbecue chip, all that stuff. But also like... What First of all, barbecue is the worst some, flavor. Barbecue is the worst flavor? Get the fuck out of here. Oh. I, would, oh, I don't see? care who makes it. That's, <laughs> well, what's your favorite potato favorite chip? Potato That's chip. an offense. Dill pickle. All dressed. Ruffles all dressed. All dressed. Close second. Ew. Ketchup. Okay. I can rock with those. Mm, I give you ketchup. Miss all Vicky's, dressed I can't do. Miss Vicky's jalapeno. It's too many okay, flavors. Like all dressed good. are just like, we just put all of the things in it and then we hope right. it happens. Yes. Sweet chili heat right. Doritos. Ooh. Oh, yes. Also, Did yes. you eat those? Flaming Hot Doritos. Cheetos. I saw Let's that you go. I want to have Chip Wars. It's on. I saw that you had <laughs> the go. fully loaded nachos in your bag the other day. Crushed those in Did bed you, last night after Black Those are the first Dorito that where they were like, this is going to taste like this, that you ate it and you're like, that is exactly uh, what it tastes like. Yeah, yeah, those are really good. So I, yeah, I like those. So see, so people see, were so like, yeah. this is it. So red. This is it. Um, so yeah, so we're also going to do like, I've actually had people already tell me like really interesting stories about the history of potato chips with their family. Like one guy was telling me that like his <laughs> father-in-law, I know <laughs> so it's really awesome. weird. One guy told me that his father-in-law has no teeth. So he can't <clears throat> chew potato chips, but he likes potato chips. So he opens a bag of potato chips and mushes them all up with his hand yeah. and then just eats the That's thing. actually the, the best way to so, eat them. But he just eats the crumbs like that. So this if you don't get to the potato chips before crumbs. he does, you just reach in and you're like, this is just sawdust. This, like, is, this, is, just, <laughs> this is what you do, yeah. Dwayne? I do don't do, do it, but my favorite part of the chip bag is the end when it's, it's just the crumbs. crumbs. All the salt and I just and dig it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, that's, I can't really eat in person like a real like I'm a like, messy motherfucker. Do not do the like the bag straighten and then like the oh, no, no, slide. No, no, I, no. It's all in my hands. You never like, cut the bag open? Just all nah, I scoop uh, it out, man. Papa. It's like part of the, the digging is what and you get it on your sleeve and it's shit. Just, it's it's like the reward. Like people I'm the same <laughs> the type of person reward. that like chews on bones and picks at all the little like the the work to Don't get that's how black man eats chicken baby it's like or veal <laughs> well that's sad okay so <laughs> Mike and my <laughs> first of all welcome to the Change the Narrative podcast <laughs> episode forty five damn it I'm here with some of my most beautiful and fantastic friends Lauren is to my left Dwayne is across Mike Tanner's here damn it we got Sean McMullen is here Papa is here and uh, Big Carlin in the building. We got a cool little... I wish you guys could see the setup that we got going on. And I wasn't finished. Okay. It was sort of a crescendo. Do you want to introduce... No. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that power. Yo, power to Lolo. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Sandra Hannabom is here. And Tundi. Tundi? I'm so bad with names, but when I get to them, I'll be so proud of myself. That was me just That's being good, proud man. of myself. That's good. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you. You should be proud of yourself for a lot of things. L like, like what? Well, I don't want to skip ahead. Well, we'll we, talk about well, that we were just talking about Blog Jam. I had to introduce the show because we were true. almost 10 minutes in and we didn't say hi to the people. I know it's been like two actual months since we actually sat down. So, Fuck. peace, pardon, our like, we had to get through the, 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 we're warm back up. Yeah, we got it. We, we'll get. We're gonna get in the bag tonight. We're gonna yeah. get in the bag. So, um, but yeah, we. You want to talk about Blog Jam? Because that's a, that's a, something I, I feel. I'm still processing it, but I feel really good about it. Sure, sure. What is Blog Jam, Mike? Blog Jam is a an Atlantic Canadian bloggers conference. It's actually called Blog Jam Atlantic. Uh, that's been happening for four years. First three were in Halifax, and this year they decided to go to Moncton. Uh, I was a speaker at Blog Jam 1 and 2. I was an MC at Blog Jam 3. And then this year I was asked to MC and also do a workshop on day two. Mm -hmm. um, what was your workshop? My workshop was called Deep Work for Bloggers. Okay. So basically it was the idea that we do a lot of really shallow, just, just a bunch of bullshit, busy work most of our time. Right. And that we should spend more time digging into 
more serious work and that there's a bunch of things that get in our way, our mm. phones or these really pretty to-do lists that we make and all this kind of stuff and that we need to kind of actually do the work instead of being like, look, I posted eight more pictures on Instagram. <laughs> when you say- Which this weekend I just posted a bunch of pictures on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, we did but, that. When you yeah. say do the work, like what is the work? Well, for me, especially working a lot in social media, it's that I see so much stuff that is just put out there because people just want to put out content. They just think like, I have to send another tweet. It's Tuesday, it's at whatever time. So a tweet has to come out. And then you look at that tweet and you're like, that's nonsense. Like it doesn't mean anything whatsoever. Yeah. So for me, it's about taking a step back and saying like, is this the best work I can do? Or am I just doing this to fill the time? Right. So, um, in social, there's tons of people that I see that they're like, oh, we've been doing this social media campaign for so long. And you look at the content and you're like, you're just, you could have <laughs> auto posted all this stuff. Right. And I actually see, uh, the other day I saw an ad on Instagram for this app and the app was like, we'll just auto make you content based on a few like little tags and we'll just roll out all this content for you. And they're like, we just do this. And the fact that something like that can happen tells me that way too many people just think that social especially can just be whatever you feel like throwing out that day. Right. And so uh, there's a book I read called Deep Work by Cal Newport, where he kind of talks about the idea that so much of the work we do is so shallow and that we need to dig into that, like actually doing work. Right. Like one of the things that I loved about your workshop, which we'll talk about in a Ooh, second, yeah. was that when we came to a point where we were talking to each <clears throat> other during this workshop, Terrence said, uh, remember when you're asking each other questions, the most important question or the most interesting question or some of the biggest question is why. Right. And if you can dig into why. And when he said it, I like yelled. I was like, I hate that Terrence <laughs> does this. Because every time I tell Terrence something, he goes, why? And I'm like, now nah, I got to actually <laughs> think about it and come up with a reason. No service um, shit over here, man. So, uh, so I was asked to do that this year. And then actually, I don't even know if you knew this part. So then they said, look, we're also looking for someone in video who okay. could do another workshop on Sunday. And I was like, well, I know a guy. I know a guy. And he's so solid. And so day two was just you and me. Just yeah. day one was 12 different presenters doing whatever. And then day two was just you and me. Yeah. Uh, and it was. It was fun. Yeah. The work, what was my workshop called? Um, tell your story, <clears throat> vulnerability, being vulnerable and authentic. I think, I think it, was it was being vulnerable and authentic in, in telling your story. Something like that. While you keep talking, I'm going to look up. Yeah, you look it up. <laughs> so I've never done a workshop before, by the way. Which is it, ridiculous. Right. And it's actually part of my social enterprise. Social mission is to provide Atlantic Canadian youth with the networks, tools, and resources to find work through content creation. So understanding yourself, learning about yourself, learning your story, learning how to tell your story is key in the ability to create whatever type of content that you're creating. Dwayne tells great stories with our page. It's more than just a logo mm -hmm. on a shirt. There's, there's personal stories oftentimes with a lot of the, the art that you create. So it's understanding what your story is and like how to tap into that. And the one thing that I've realized like that's, I feel like it's gotten me ahead the most is that I'm just me. Like my, my brand is my name. <clears throat> my business is my name. I'm me. My logo is my face. And it's just like, here's what it is. Mm -hmm. And don't like it. Go follow somebody else. And it's worked for me. It's people, whether you like me or not, I feel like some people probably don't like me, but they see the real mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. makes them feel this way or another. But yeah. I don't know how to be nobody else. And I tried doing that shit before. And that's just lame. What do you mean? Like try to conform to what people yeah. want you to be? Yeah. Or like, ooh, that person's cool. Yeah. Let me do the shit that they're doing so that I can be cool. Mm -hmm. Or like whatever that person says I should do, I just do it yeah. so that they accept me for being cool. I did that shit all through Saint of X, bro. Right, right. The fucking whole time. Until I was like, man, this is some bullshit. And then I laugh, and they're like, why the fuck did you leave? And my mind, I'm like, this is not my truth. Hmm. This would, this would, we called ourselves the, the, oh, fuck, what was that corny ass name that we had? The New Breed. 
<laughs> Did you spell new with N U? No. We, <laughs> <laughs> How many we Y's were in breeze? Like, uh... <laughs> no, nah, bro, but seriously, and it was like, it was five of us, and we all came to school at the same time, and it was, we were so cool, and like, we were all first years, and it was like, man, that shit wore off quick. Hmm. And it was just this facade of being this person that you actually fucking weren't. <laughs> Did you, do you think, I, I'm, I say this for a particular reason, but. Do you think that you being heavily involved in athletics had anything to do with that concept of like aligning with other people? And this, this isn't me saying athletics are bad, but like I played high school football and like most of my identity in high school was tied to me wearing my jersey on that day and doing this on this day and going right. to these places. And I find that it kind of taught me this idea of like, like I, I think I learned a lot from sports and it's stuff that I still think is fantastic, but I also had this idea of like, get in line and do the things that are expected of you. And I think it's really easy to, to take that into other fields that you maybe shouldn't carry that part of it into. Right. Like I like the fact of carrying over like the work ethic and all that kind of stuff. But right. And the idea of like line up with everybody else, get what, in line and do that. Going with dudes as they shit in other houses, spin cycles in the washing machine. What? Did I miss out on my varsity experience? You never like, shit during the spin cycle? Um, no, I, I missed the memo on the spin cycle with the shitting. Yo. <laughs> I didn't Did you guys shit. like high five after that? So this is where yeah, I'm like. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and this is like the blankest day. I'm like, oh, so God, bad, yo. Stupid. Yeah, like, yo. I hate all, saying that, but that all, is like so foolish. All to be part of the crew, man. That's what mm. it was. I would have wow. let you out your fucking mind. I ain't doing that. <laughs> you we were do out that. of our minds. <laughs> in our defense. We didn't know what the fuck <laughs> new breed, baby. we were doing. They were the new breed. That's, yeah, yes, that's yes, what yes, it was. Yes, and yes. we lost every game that was important. Oh. So that that shit was lame. <laughs> that shit Shitting was... in washers and not even winning. That oh, shit was man. How we want winning oh, championships with all our spin cycle shit. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> if somebody did that to me, I, I think I would have to like, I have, have to, to fuck put hands on them. Like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 You do that to my machine, you get you get some hands on me. <laughs> we didn't care. <laughs> we didn't care. But you're right. Like there's this this part of just like do fit in because when you're on the court or you're on the field, you're you're you got the same shit on. You're hanging out all the time. You're you're just a your yeah. family, and it's like now you have to do. Mm, you mm. don't, but yeah, I feel like, yeah. What do you think, Lo? I have, I mean, now that I'm six years removed from my university experience and still struggling to find a structure in my life that makes sense. Talk about that. Um, I can see like the good and the bad. Totally agree. All the best skills I have, particularly soft skills and be able to communicate, talk about culture, build cultures, mm. change management, all those kinds of things, like dealing with adversity. All that kind of stuff came from sport. None of that useful shit came from school. Yeah. Team projects, not the same. <laughs> yeah. Not the same at all. Right? But I do feel that. And if you talk to, and I didn't, I was not an Olympian, but if you talk to an Olympic athlete, mm -hmm. someone that's been focusing on something so micro, like if you are a paddler, you're trying to shave off like nanoseconds yeah. off your score, waiting for a four year cycle to make it to A, to qualify for the Olympics and then to go. And when that's all done, because eventually you're gonna retire, what do you have? And so the piece of advice that I give to any girl that I coach now is, particularly when they're in university, you are not volleyball. Mm -hmm. Because Fuck you I wish wrap, somebody told us that you shit, You wrap man. your identity up in it. And I did for a long, and I did for years after. I mean, I still mm -hmm. like tell people, like I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. No, I am not a fucking athlete. I am now what my girls call a NARP. What's Do you know a how NARP? A non-athletic regular person. <laughs> <laughs> that has a word now, which I find so hilarious. It's a great name. But, you know, I, I give them that it. advice. I'm like, you are more than just a, a sport. Narp. This is a means to an end, not an end in of itself, because you will not yeah. forever be a volleyball player. Yeah. This, what are yeah. the other things that you have? Yeah. Yeah. This is really interesting because so Terrence's uh, workshop, which was called Tell Your Story, Storytelling for Videos and Blogs, 
you didn't mention vulnerability in the title, but we did talk about it. Um, I freestyled that after. Yeah, yeah that was after the I fact. I changed my mind. Like, I like that. Like, yeah. You were like, this is what I'm going to do. And they were like, okay. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, that was a huge part of this was what is the, the negative story that right. you tell? Like, what's yourself. the negative story that you tell yourself about yeah. yourself all the time? And I think there was, there was one woman there who shared uh, about her identity as an athlete. And oh yeah, how she felt bodybuilder. like yeah, oh, female yeah. bodybuilder, and, yeah. an older yeah. Even worse. bodybuilder, even worse, who yeah. suddenly was like, I, "I'm not that anymore." So how do I even, how do I even continue to live my life being that thing? Like the way we tie our identities to things like that is really interesting to me because like I'm, <laughs> I'm, 19 years removed from playing high school football. That's the last time I played football. I blew my knee out after my senior year before I played college, and. That was it. But I still, the, this weekend we were talking about football and I was like, oh yeah, here's the scores of all of my grade 12 games. Here's like, <laughs> like I could still tell you like all of those things because I for so long tied my identity to yeah. you are that thing. Now, before, one of the things that we talked about during my workshop was this uh, thing called Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies. And so what she basically says is everyone is one of these four things. Uh, and they're amazing. Like once you start to dig into it and you start to meet people and talk to them about it, it's really interesting. So people are either an upholder, which is you follow the rules. There's a rule, you follow it, end of story. Obligers, who basically tie all of their sort of who they are to what someone else thinks of them in most cases. Questioners who are like, well, I, I need to know all the details. I need to weigh all the pros and all the cons about everything that there is. And then there's rebels who tie themselves to what they believe is their identity of something. And I am an obliger. My life is tied to how, what everyone else thinks about me. And when I was in grade five, we started moving. In between grade five and grade seven, I lived in Woolfield, Digby, Yarmouth, Liverpool, Antigonish, and Halifax. And so every time I moved to, I was like, okay, I have to now be best friends with everybody. <laughs> and I was this ridiculously tall, ridiculously scrawny kid. Like, I had an Adam's apple and shoulders. Like, that was like the whole, my whole body was like a stick drawing like that. And then when I bulked up and started playing football, and all of a sudden you get the idea that, like, yeah, it's so weak, but like, you're cool and you're part of this thing and you can do whatever you want. At our school, the football team ran the school. Right. And so you, you get tied into that identity and you're like, okay, well, that's what I am. And then you walk, suddenly, like, I look around and I'm like, I have arthritis in my knee and I have multifocals. I haven't had hair here since I was 25. Like, and I'm still like, do you want to know how good we did in that game against St. Pets? Or like, I just, I just think like, again and again, I, all of my, what I feel are my greatest skills, which are my ability to work with other people. And it all came from playing sports. But there's so much from an identity perspective that, that tied into to that that ended up being negative. So Terrence starts and wants people to tell their negative stories. And so everyone's kind of working on their negative stories. And then he has everybody think about the way we tell stories. And, and then he asks, does anyone else feel that way with each story? And with each story, everyone's like, like one woman was like, I don't feel like I'm enough. And like everyone was like, yeah. That's me. That's, mm. I yeah. totally feel that. And so <laughs> then we broke off and then they had us ask all these questions. So mine was that, um, that I fear that I am not a better father than my father was. My father was a shitty dad. Like, wasn't there, basically. The, like, I was, I was talking to my wife about it last night, and I was like, you know, my dad never yelled at me. She's like, yeah, he didn't give a shit. Like, he, yeah, he wasn't you, there and yeah. didn't care. <laughs> if they don't get so mad. If they don't get mad, like, that's the thing. And I yell <laughs> at my kids all the time. And then my friends are like, yes, because you want them to succeed and right. you want them to be good and all that stuff. And so, but I had this just... and. As Terrence said, you can hear that it's a dumb idea and you can hear that it's ridiculous and you just continue to tell yourself that same story over and over again. Mm. And when we started digging into mm. why, which was, I think, the really crux of it, <laughs> and people started asking why, and someone was like, well, what would happen if you were a better dad than your dad? And I was like, fuck. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know what I would do if I all of a sudden felt that way. Yeah. Interesting. So everything that you're saying right now so closely ties to my week away at Windhorse Farm oh, last week. Yes. Like you're you're putting words to a lot of the stuff that I worked on last week with 
five other fabulous women and amazing women leading this thing. And uh, that's Dorothy Spence from Purpose Led Business School, by the yeah. way, running that training. Um, hmm. Common Good Solutions doing some work there. But the stories we tell ourselves in our minds are our interpretation of the actual events that happen around us. Mm -hmm. We don't oh, whoa, filter. Whoa, whoa. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. So our perception of reality right. is a story that we tell ourselves right. the way that we interpret the events that are actually happening to us. Right. Might not be truth. It's rarely, rarely actual true. truth, <laughs> either positively or negatively. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the crux of all of it is that we can be the creators in our own storylines. And so the perfect example in my mind is. Get it. He didn't text me back. Why, <laughs> why do you think he didn't text me back? You just created. He's out there. He's mm -hmm. out there with some, other, with some other chick. I don't know. It's probably his friends. I don't know. Maybe they're probably talking shit about me. Yeah. He's not interested. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. How, from what? No response? Mm -hmm. Right. You weave this whole thing. You give yourself emotion. You get yourself all worked up about something small. Mm -hmm. And that becomes your reality. Because you told yourself it was true. So if you could undo that story, what is the possibility if you are a better father than your father? How powerful is that? Yeah. That's a, that's a scary part, eh? Yeah. But the work that we were doing last week was about... Now, so I think you are have had more experience or actually thought about these things where you've uncovered those mm -hmm. unconscious beliefs. But that was the big thing is that a lot of these negative stories that are in mind that have been implanted from a very young age, because between ages zero and seven is when we really solidify and hardwire those belief systems that we witness, that our families give us, that we've experienced. And it takes a lot of work to undo those things. But some of the exercises that we were doing was a lot of writing, mm -hmm. like stream of consciousness. Like you're not allowed to stop and think. Mm. You're writing as fast as possible from someone else's perspective about your life. Mm. And the shit that popped up. <laughs> listen, I'm telling you, there was lots of baggage thrown to the wind last mm. week. Particularly when I was walking through 200, well, 200 plus year old, old growth Acadian forest in my mm. bare feet for four hours. Mm. At the end of October. <laughs> cool. It was amazing. Wow. So when I, so wow. I, was, I was saying earlier to you that I write regularly for a Yummy Mummy Club, mm -hmm. which I often then have to explain is a parenting blog. <laughs> because when you're a guy and you're like, I write for this blog, it's called Yummy Mummy Club. People like, are like, oh, I like so what kind of mix. stuff do you write about? <laughs> um, so I write for, so Erica M, who's a former Much Music VJ, started Power this platform <laughs> because she wanted moms to have like a place where they could be something other than like, look how beautiful everything is and how perfect everything is. So a lot of her platform is like, something sucked today and I want to tell you about it and this, these kind of things. And so when I write for myself or for like something that's mine, I bang away on that keyboard and like, I don't stop. It's, it's, I don't edit it. I don't do anything with it. I just write it and I put it out. So, um, a while back I wrote a piece for them about father's day because every father's day, I feel like an absolute asshole if I don't want to hang out with my kids. And my wife is like, why don't you take the day off? And you're like, but that would make me feel like literally a piece of shit to do that. And so I wrote this piece about Father's Day and how it's like my least favorite holiday. And it's like this big celebrity thing, like, oh, cool, you get to go golfing and leave and do all this stuff. And you're like, wow. cool, I can leave just like my dad. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I really like the idea of just not censoring those thoughts and letting whatever comes out come out. Like the first thing I posted when he said this was like, you're not a good dad. And then I was like, that's not like, that's the edited version of what I am actually here right. talking about. Yeah. But when we started, like Terrence, Terrence was in a room full of women who had never met him before in their whole lives, except maybe as the guy who was walking around with a camera the day before. And the stuff that you got people to bring out and talk about and continue to talk about on social and well after it, I was... And then on the way home, he's like, yeah, that was my first workshop. And I was like, that's the first mm. time you've ever done this? I was in awe. Because like, people were telling me, like, Thank oh, you. you look really comfortable doing this. I'm like, yeah, I speak it. Anytime there's a conference, I'm like, do you want? I'll go talk. I love talking. Um, but to just be like, 
oh, I guess I'll just stand in this room full of 75 women and have every single one of them have this life changing opening oh. experience was. Let me cut stunning. you off there, though. Yeah. You went to education school. Mm -hmm. So did you feel like that had something? To Absolutely. Do with it? And, and Mike, we had even talked about like the dynamic of the workshop. Like mine was more stop, talk, back and forth. Mm. Let's watch this. All right, let's break into groups. Okay, let's ask questions. So, and I'm used to being in, like, when I taught Citadel, I had 42 grade 12 students in a classroom. Mm. So, it felt really similar in a lot of ways. The, the, I couldn't have, I would have never been able to get high school students to open up the way that these no. older women did. But, and I think that played to my advantage, absolutely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I felt like being in a classroom, but, like, a little mm. different, but... Very similar, but mm. the demographic was, yeah, it was cool, man. Mm. It was a cool experience. So, <clears throat> if, to piggyback on the self-talk thing, too, do you think, so I had a situation at home yesterday. Do you think that, like, entrepreneurs are built differently in terms of our tolerance for risk? 100%. And that we don't have as much of the self-talk about what could go wrong with shit? So we're more willing to jump than other people because. So, so I would say a classic entrepreneur, because I know entrepreneurs that don't have a super high risk tolerance. Okay. And therefore preferred to build a side hustle before they said, fuck it, I'm starting a business. Right. They wanted yeah. to make sure it was lucrative and safe and yeah. smart. And then they were going to bail right. on a day job. Um, but. Do I think there's inherently risk with being an entrepreneur? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You always have to be making sure that you're making bank, yeah. that you're reaching the people you need to reach. And how could you possibly be an entrepreneur if you weren't willing to take risks? Yeah, because I always thought I was very averse to risk because I'm the, same, I'm the side hustler. But I've started to realize that I'm more willing to... <laughs> do risky things than yeah. I thought as yeah. far as like, okay, I got a side hustle, but I'm willing to drop five G's on something yeah. mm -hmm. that I don't know how I'm going to make back. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I'm going to be able to yeah. make it back. Yeah. Um, and everybody around me is like, you're fucking crazy. Um, what are you doing with our money? So uh, <laughs> yeah. that so wasn't that's what the girl said last night. That, that wasn't, that wasn't yeah. the situation. Um, but I, it, this was had nothing to do with business or anything, but I just, I, I got frustrated because something happened and I found my wife and I lived with her parents. All three of them had this very, oh, this could go wrong. This, and they went through the whole worst case scenario for this thing. And I'm like, yeah, but the probability is so low Answer for my question. to mm -hmm. not happen. And they're like, yeah, but the risk of what would happen if it did go wrong is so great. And then Natasha's like, yeah, they're right. I'm going to go with what they said. And I'm like, I guess I'm done here. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. And off to bed, I guess. That's yeah. it. <laughs> my, my job once. So I, I've taught. I have an education degree as well. And uh, I was also a corporate trainer for quite a long time. Yeah. And I worked at Converges. So Converges... The call center. Uh, the call center, yeah. which is now a series of furniture places, yes. uh, used to employ 2,500 people. Uh, and when I worked there, we employed somewhere between 1,200 and 1,400 people. And I always, I always had this idea of like, you get a good job because good jobs are stable and then you'll have that job and then everything will be fine. And then my job, I showed up to work one day and the center director brought me in a room and he was like, hey, everyone likes you. You do training really well. They think you're great. So here's what you're going to do. For the next two days, you're going to take 15 people into a room at a time hmm. and tell them that we are cutting their medical <laughs> benefits in half, that we're no what? longer matching their pensions, and that anything going forward that they put forward to this pension, we, we are not matching anything whatsoever. And I was like, cool, I'll go do that. And so my, my job for two days was to have 15 people come in this room and be like, hey, everybody, I want to tell you how this is exciting news because it helps us grow and helps us do this. And in my head, I'm like, we're going down. Like, you don't make cuts like that if, if you're like, well, we're wondering what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had this idea after that and after a couple of other jobs where I was like, 
stability in NARP jobs is <laughs> uh, <laughs> stability a in a normal job is a is a myth. Like you can have that job and just it's gone. So yeah. I'm not I'm not a super risky person because honestly I'm the secondary income. I was saying, Laura, my wife's a breadwinner. I get like ketchup, maybe mustard. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't do any of the like. There's no meat. It's just whatever I do on the side. Well, um, welcome to um, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. Right, but well, we've talked about so, that yeah. before. And so my wife is is a very risk averse individual. So we don't risk a lot that yeah. way. But I also think like. I think that a lot of people have a, I don't think like when I hear Gary Vee be like, if you if you don't quit your day job, like you, you're not in it. And I'm yeah, like, see, so I think that's bullshit. bullshit. Mm. That's bullshit. Like you, you have things you need to pay for. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't. And what you, privilege is it of you to just quit your day job and then, then go figure it out? Like Gary Vee in a pair of yeah. his cloud and dirt shoes driving in the back of a car while D-Rock films them being like, if you don't quit your day job, you're, you're lazy. I'm like, <laughs> fuck yeah. off. Like, but I also think like in, in fact, my head, so. in my head, I also don't think that that job is secure. Like one of the things I love about mm -hmm. being able to do whatever I want to do, because I do a whole bunch of random stuff mm -hmm. is that I can just do whatever I want to do and stuff happens and stuff comes and I don't have to worry about it. if something falls, I can pick up something else or I can do whatever. But I think like, I think you can be risk averse or totally risky, but I think in, in the case of people who are still risky, I don't think it's that you don't think it'll fail necessarily. I think it's that you think you can come up with something if it does. Like, yeah. You just know you'll be able to land like, on your feet. You'll be able to figure it out yeah. and that's it. And, uh, I just, I was wondering, I was like, you know what, maybe I'm more of an entrepreneur than I yeah. give myself credit because yeah. This had nothing to do with business, but in my mind, I was like, something goes wrong, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. Yeah. Whereas they were like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Yeah. Mike, one of your side hustles, or one of your main hustles, or one of your... I got a lot of little hustles. Is website development. It is. And that's why you're part of our, our team. It is why I'm part of your team. So, you're working on a website right now. Mm-hmm. So that CTN, what's the, we have a domain yet? Did, I think we're, that's a great question. I think I was building it on just a subdomain and then we were still talking about exactly what we wanted to use because right. we didn't necessarily want to use CTN podcast because it's so much more than a podcast. And we didn't want to use like change the narrative because again, so much more than that. So I think we we're still working on that. But my, mm. my big thing was that I wanted to build something that would let, the team grow and explore whatever like whatever they wanted to do you could just funnel it into that place where everything was like the first so one red cat was originally me and a bunch of guys who were doing independent comedy films and we just used that domain because i was like ah, oh, i like the name of that that sounds great whatever and then when we shut that thing down the guys were like oh, i'd really like to blog somewhere and i was like okay everybody blog here Everyone will have their own page. Everyone will have their own blog. You can write whatever content you want. One guy's like, I want to make videos. I was like, cool, we'll put them here. Like, I have the same vision for the Change the Narrative podcast, which is like, there's this room full of like amazing people, most of whom I just met tonight, that I'm like, they're all doing, to me, insanely interesting things. So I want to make the, the website more than just like, go here so you can get this or go here and get this so that you can kind of explore what the whole team is doing right. and see sort of across the board all of these interesting programs. So whether it's, whether it's someone, you know, telling stories of, of a certain group or whether it's um, someone creating a, a fashion brand and where mm -hmm. they sell it and, and even just the shows they do and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted it to be something that everyone had the ability to get their stuff seen and heard and read and all those things in, in an interesting way so. so we appreciate you for that Thanks, thank buddy. you yes You're mike thank damn you. right um all right mike get out of here okay <laughs> we appreciate you very much now go sit down on the couch yeah, yeah. And, thank uh, you for chatting with us it's always you. love hey i wasn't sure if you you're sticking about around about oh, yeah. i okay, wasn't good. sure if you were still mad about the veal though so i didn't want to you didn't even <laughs> you didn't even tell the the veal story so i do I don't even want to talk about it. It made Should me I sad. Switch? No, Should I sad. hop in or? Feel sad. No, no, you're good. Stay here. Stay. Okay. Here's what we'll do. We're gonna we're gonna rock out because we got a couple things we gotta 
we gotta go over, and then we're gonna bring somebody else in here, because we have things that need to be written. It didn't go as far as I wanted to. We got things that need to be written on this website, so we gotta talk to the person who's writing oh, the things right. that go on the website. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? She's had a bomb in the bed, yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to get to Sandra in a minute, but goddamn, we got some shit we got to talk about. Quick, quick, quick things. Such as? First of all, we're on Spotify, motherfuckers. Oh, yes. Holy Finally. crap. Officially. Finally. Officially, Finally. we're on Spotify. Well, How I many e- weeks was that? Well, I emailed the, um, like the, 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 the hosting the platform. The thing, yeah. And they were like, I was like, yo, we applied like early in the summer. Mm. Yeah. What the fuck's going on? And they said, oh, Sorry. It was a Friday. We'll make sure that we get you up by Monday. So they fucked up? Something happened. Good thing you asked. And we weren't there. And they said, we'll get you up on Monday. (laughs) And we were up the next day. Wow. That means they could have done this shit months ago. But it doesn't matter. (laughs) Okay. Because we're here now. Okay. Okay. So we're on the Spotify. Yeah. Changing the narrative podcast. There's some bullshit ass podcast that's on there called Changes the Narrative Podcast. Had what? like three or four episodes, but only one in two minutes long. Oh, did you listen to it? Bullshit. Oh, okay. How long ago did they start? Hey, it's beef. You, you want <laughs> no, but that like, smoke? how long have they been like? Let's go. <laughs> it's bullshit, yo. How long has it been up? I don't know. I'm here. I'm a. I'm a. You bring I'm it up. Changing the narrative. Changing. The See, this is like narrative. my new Zen Len state where mm. I'm like changing the narrative. No, normally, I'd be like, <laughs> "Bro, October fifth, October fifth, September twenty sixth. So they just started. One minute, two minutes, two minutes. Just so you know, the network, the power of connection, and the thought. Listen, I'm only giving them pub for us to everybody who's our listener to go and complain and tell them, <laughs> <laughs> tell them that they're tell them we want that smoke. Some, they're imposters. <laughs> On the Spotify, <laughs> and we will not accept Where's it from? impersonators. Where's it from? What, what are they Bullshit even talking about? Land. Bullshit land. Bullshit I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm, just so, I'm just so curious. Okay, we'll talk about it offline. We're getting, we'll rid, of, we'll we're getting rid of them. No, like, no, no offense to you, but you stole our name, and you're not even putting up real podcasts. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> but we're on Spotify. Damn it. We are. <laughs> really we're the we're change of the narrative with the yellow logo. I don't understand how, how he, here they is, got right in there when we've been putting out real content in two months. You know what? We're going to deal with them. It's okay. Because we want smoke. I want the Listen, smoke. <laughs> why bother wasting your energy? Because I don't want no imposters up there. You don't got to worry about it. I, this is the other thing that I learned. Uh oh. During my your four, four hour walk in the woods. Wind horse week. Mm. Like, if you're putting energy towards that. What do you think we're going to get back into that? Mm. I just Besides vindication. I just want to be the only change in the narrative podcast. On we Spotify. are the only change in the narrative podcast. Okay, you're right. Lo, you're right. Free that creative energy. You're right. And we, ha- all have, we also have merch now. Yes. Yes. Yay, isn't Lolo. it pretty, everybody? L- Dwayne did an amazing job. Yeah. Lolo got the hoodie on. Change the narrative hoodie. Thanks, Black Mark. hoodie with the yellow logoisms. With a little bit of what do we call the audio waves? The audio waves in the background, in the background. very subtle touch. Dwayne's doing yeah. his thing. I, I'm not. I. It was one of those things I did at a whim. It's oh, literally so just the original graphic, and I was like, "This is lazy." <laughs> but it it actually a lot of people. I had it up for sale at Atlantic Fashion Week, and a lot of people were like, "I don't know, but I really like that hoodie, man." So it, it did stand out. So awesome. it got a lot of a lot of compliments. Hoodies for sale. Wait, rpaysme.com. Rpaysme.com. Yeah, what were you gonna say, Lo? Say, I mean, we're already talking about the man's fashion. We're all wearing it. Hey, I got my APM hoodie on. I had my APM hoodie. I got my APM hat on. I had my APM hoodie on yesterday. No, you got the Beasley today when I was show. at uh, Blog Jam. Mike Tanner had the rpaysme red crew neck on at Blog Jam. I got the black Beasley on. Mm-hmm. Shouts to Peter, much love to the Pete and the Beasley. Um, and speaking of fashionistas and yeah. fashionados, I was Fashion Week. <laughs> fashion Week was a success. Um, very- you know that your show 
on Friday night had by far the most poop law and her applause, right? I didn't know that because oh, I was backstage. Hands down. Hands freaking down. Freaking out. Yeah. Dwayne's go. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I uh, like more it. than the closing show by far. I, I, yeah. Well, that that's humbling. I'm not going to lie. I was going through a lot that we, Terrence knows a little bit about it. I'm not going to go into it. Don't do it. But it was, it was a stressful, it was a stressful week between the host and everything else, the day job, and just trying to be like good at this shit. <laughs> Um, I didn't even pick up some of my product until I think the day before. So I didn't know how it was going to come together. Shout out to Par. She was like my right hand during the event yeah. and like helped keep me calm and, and all of that stuff. But like it was, uh, yeah, dropping my kids off and making switches with my friend right before and all kinds of madness. Um, but then when it came to, oh yeah, like to actual do, like the runway part and all of that smoother than probably any show I've had like really? it wasn't as much chaos as there usually is I know yeah, you, you probably thought it was chaotic but it's way worse usually yeah you were pretty calm in the backstage yeah I you, haven't seen you like that in ever yeah like moments in culture I was literally just <laughs> running from one Man end of the library to the other pork, deep fried pork slow roast juice yeah. on his leg yeah, it was. It was it smelled I was, good because I was an idiot. I was trying to cook. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I was literally cooking the day of the show because I wanted to have stuff for the guests and for the models, and we had food and drinks and kids all over the place, and it was stupid. And <laughs> only Salita and I were the only people who working. And then yeah, Salita had some volunteers, but like they didn't know all the details. Right. So it was like we still had to like go behind them. And we were both stuck in creative mode and we couldn't really manage the infrastructure part of it well. So that was a life lesson right there. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, Atlanta Fashion Week, I'm glad I don't have to deal with none of this bullshit. I could see Angela and Jody had the same eyes I had at moments in culture. So I left them alone as much as possible. And yeah. I just focused on my models and my looks. And he and, kicked uh, fucking ass. Yeah. Like I still was designing my slide up until the very last minute, just like moments in culture. Which, I remember seeing you sit on the floor there with the laptop getting to it. Yeah. Um, I, all <laughs> Didn't that, you go to Starbucks for Wi-Fi? Yeah. I went to Starbucks because <laughs> I knew, that's what I was saying. I was nice to have Par because Par was there to like talk. Models tend to have a lot of random questions. And I was like, Par, you're going to have to deal with them. I'm going to Starbucks. Speaking of, um, I remember, P I feel like Peter, oh no, uh, Alex Rose, when she came on the show and she yeah. talked about having, she goes to these shoots to bring a friend with her. Yes. That friend is typically female. Yep. Yeah. Do you think it was beneficial that you had a lady in the back mm -hmm. with the model stuff versus a mister? Yeah, that yes and no. Um, I've had guys help me out backstage before and they hadn't done that kind of stuff before. So they were giving me looks like Dwayne, that girl just took a top off. I'm like, yeah, no, no, just chill, man. Chill, chill. It's, yeah. it's good. It's, it's, just chill. It's fashion um, show. So, like, it is this, like, a little bit of a culture shock thing for dudes. And But the the type of women that model generally are the type are just comfortable and don't give don't care anyway. Right. Um, but for me, it was mostly, I felt mostly uncomfortable in the beginning, especially some of them are 16 and 17. So, right. I'm like, I feel like this creepy old dude um, talking to these these attractive women and girls all around me. Uh, but I'm just used to it now, so it's it's not as big of a deal. But yes, having a woman in general, I think, does ease the creep factor. But in that environment, <laughs> there's so there's so many people around anyway. To be a creep, you have to be really yeah, real you, creep. Yeah. So like when she means yeah, like fair. when when you invite someone to your studio and it's just you and the model, yeah, that right. that's when things can really get weird. So I think what she said to bring a friend is a is good advice. Nice, so, good. Yeah. So you're you're happy with with Fashion Week and now what's what's kind of what's come out of that and like what's been like how do you what are you building 
moving forward from that? Yeah. So basically with moments in culture, the lesson I took from it was I didn't have any of my stuff for sale that was on the runway. I had intended to, but it just, I was so focused on the event that I didn't get a chance to, to do all of that. Uh, but this time around, like I put the effort to just get all of that stuff ready before fashion week, ready to go. And people were seeing it and buying it. So right. I had great sales. My mom sales. tried to buy two shirts. Yeah. She's still yeah. going to buy them. And, yeah. And Neither size, but yeah. <laughs> to, and again, that was part of the organizational mishap stress that I was dealing with because I, at that point, didn't have all my sizes with right. me. I had them on Saturday, but it was literally like, oh, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? So when you guys saw me on Friday, that was probably the most, it was, it, it was not a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you did it. But, but overall, though, like, I've had a lot of compliments over how the collection presented. Um, yeah, and the best sales I've ever had, period. So awesome. it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a win. So <laughs> for the, for the next little bit, I'm not going to focus on designing any more new stuff. I'm yes. mostly going to focus on just what I already, the existing product and getting it across the country and then across yes. to the United Fuck. States, yeah. then really to smart. Europe. And then, and I'm just doing one CD at a time. Exportation. Out, NSBI is helping There's me with money export. in exportation. Yeah. Hey. Um, I took, because I mean, you guys were talking about yes, that during the summer. Were. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take them up on <laughs> yes. this and friggin' just call NSBI, see what's up. Yuck. And yes. they've been like on it. They've been really helpful. So awesome. Connecting Fucking me with advisors that and love everything. It. Well, and plus that line is so topical. Like people are are feeling unsettled and there's a lot of blame flying around. There's yeah. a lot of everyone feeling on edge and, you know, in particular, well, the the shirt that my mom really loved was um, Purpose Over Profit, mm -hmm. Purpose and Profit. Yeah. It's like it came down the runway, uh, Purpose Over Profit. Mom mm -hmm. was like, and it was so awesome. Thank you so much to Jody for pointing out three front row seats my mom thought that was like the best thing ever there you go oh my god you had a fashion Much love, Jody, you love. front row and like be a vip <laughs> and you know because we had just walked in and jody's got this like white fur coat on let me and, just hold yeah. up no i don't want to i don't care <laughs> did you see lauren i know i told her she looked like she worth about 10 million dollars in that coach yo year. she looked like <laughs> Thanks. Laura looked Yo. official. <laughs> you missed out, big fella. He saw it walk in and out the door. <laughs> oh, so you did see it. <sighs> you got a queen, bro. She came in all tall and just like just you got a queen. Thing. I'm like, Yo. what, what is? Yo, low <laughs> shut this. Turn up. Low shut this shit <laughs> down. I was very impressed. Do we even get yeah. a picture of it? Probably not. No, Probably we didn't take not. no yeah. pictures. I, I know. I, I never think take to take no pictures, pictures of these in these situations. No, no not at all. You, you gents were working. Yo, the, oh, yeah. the cover photo of this episode has to be a group shot, so everybody yes, has to stay. Yes. Like I'm just letting y'all know that right now. Yeah, so y'all have to stay for that. And I gotta say, I love your mom. Like I could see <sighs> the personality kick. Yeah, yeah, she. I think she had a little bit of both you and your sister. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, it was it was interesting. And much love to Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. She looked damn good too, y'all. Yeah, let's not, yes. let's oh, not, let's yes. keep it real. Yeah, the, whole, the whole, the whole, uh, yeah. serious I mean, women. The, the, the serious women, you know. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, yeah. My mom, my mom came downstairs thing. after like me getting dressed, and Hillary and I were just like. Where do you get off at 58 <laughs> looking like that? Feeling it. She's yeah. in like some of the best shape, shape of her 58? life. 58. 58. Yeah, man. That's, Ooh. That's, that's, I know. Listen. Ooh. I know. Linda? It's trouble. Linda. Do your damn thing, Linda. What, <laughs> what, what did Charlemagne used to call that? I'm what? not even going to do that. I, I can't do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to do it. You know it. I'm not going to do it. I know what it is. I'm not going to say it. You have to say it. it now. Just say it. VV. Vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she'll get a kick out of that. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do, I can't do it. I feel like I'm being very disrespectful. Oh, I apologize. Listen, she's, no, that's she's um, that classy. That's fair. Right. No, okay. listen. 
Linda shut it down. Uh, Linda shut the shit down. It was a good time. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was good. Um, yeah, thank you. And thank you for offering Mm -hmm. all of you guys, like anyone who was there was like, Dwayne, what can we do to help? And I just wished I could have given people things to do. I just, yeah. But I appreciate the offers at least. Yeah. So the other two, the other two designs that I wanted to mention, because everyone should go check them out if you haven't already, were the last two on the gents that walked down yes. the runway, were the unceded territory oh, and then yes. the Black Panther like mix up, and then his posing from like, oh, it was awesome. Oh, thank you. But in I particular, love it. like, but I can just all I can see is the red on mm-hmm. unceded territory, which is like, absolutely, that should be across the country, like. Yeah. Each of those. There is some powerful messaging in those. This man, he's very intentional. Uh, he's designs. about to do some shit, yo. I'm not gonna yeah. I I already told Dwayne. I feel semi responsible for the success of his business. <laughs> I do. As the person who pre- will create the primary video content for your business or one of and using this podcast to propel your business to the next level in the production of it, and then all the shit we've recorded that we haven't even put together yet because we're just too busy. Hmm. But we're going to put together a nice short. But for me, I'm like, listen, man, if I can make these fucking random ass people who I don't even know sell shit because of the videos that I give them, damn it, this fucking guy should be doing the same. Well, I appreciate that. Well, it's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just saying right now, I wish I could pay for your services well i don't even want you to pay me i just want you to show up to the podcast on time (laughs) i can't even guarantee that that's the thing (laughs) just show up and do your thing because that's and that's what we said with the with the gear too right like we we said all right you know what if we're gonna if we're gonna get if we're gonna take this show to the next level because it's working Hmm. people fuck with it like they really fuck with the show yeah and it's fun. I I was sad for the two months that we couldn't record because yeah. I was, felt like there's a piece of my life missing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like it's therapy. I feel like it's 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 people who listen get to watch us grow. I feel like that's really important to, for, mm. to people to see. the. Gr- well, someone said this earlier, like who doesn't want to see Halifax businesses succeed? Like if you can see the story of someone's business from the city that wins, it's like, oh, shit can really happen. So if we're the central location for a lot of this cool shit that's happening, that's how I really feel. Like these microphones and these cameras should be able to propel those people who I really fuck with to the next level because I should be making dope ass shit that people want to fuck with so that my people can win. Simple and plain. Mm-hmm. True enough. So you're going to win, young brother. Well, I appreciate that. You already I, win. I think, yes, I think we're all going to win. We win. The thing is like... <laughs> I don't know. Somebody accused me of being whiny or something because I was complaining about race at one point. Um, they didn't have melanin in their skin, did surprisingly, they? Surprisingly, yes. <gasps> this was an Asian dude in Bermuda who would have experienced racism firsthand from okay. black people, actually, ironically. <laughs> that makes sense. So I found it very interesting that this individual was, a, was supporting Trump ideals. Um, and it was basically like, what are you complaining about? Um, so anyway, my whole thing was my life. I'm, this is icing for me. I, my life is great, but I'm not going to stop calling out fuck shit. Nor either. should you. Don't yeah. let them try to silence you. Yeah. You will not so, be guessing. Anyway, like I said, yeah, we're guaranteed. We're going to win. We're winning. And winning, I'm continuing to win. And winning. So Lo, good. what the fuck did you do on your adventure? You want to tell us about it? Uh, My... Deep Woods immersion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You want to give us some like real, real in depth? Uh, well, I mentioned the like four hour hike in the woods barefoot. Yes. Which, and it is like it's November this week. My feet didn't even get cold. But that was the middle of the week. Um, essentially, I'll tell you a little bit about the journey, I guess. Um, Dorothy's a big believer in that if you're trying to transform your business or evolve your business, it starts with you. Okay. Particularly if you're an entrepreneur or you're in a position like a leadership position because you so bring all your shit to work. This like, oh, we're parking it at the door never, or whatever is like not accurate. We show up how we are mm-hmm. in our jobs. And if you're lucky, you get to be your real self if you don't have to shut off some other part of you. So 
if you're going to be willing to make that transformation, it's got to start with you. And so we started, and the way that the week had started, I mean, we were there with, I was, there were five other women, so Steph, who we work with, um, was there with me, and so that was awesome, just getting to get to know Steph more, and we'll be working together more, so that's fantastic. Yeah. But, um, the other four women that were in the training were also just like these. It was only six of y'all? Yeah. Ooh, intimate. It was, yeah, it was. It was It was awesome. Plus, I mean, Dorothy and Dorothy's daughter, Laura, who's a riot, She's amazing. She did all the cooking for us. Hmm. Bless her heart. Um, and, and it really started, it didn't start super, super deep. And I think in the past she's run it that way, which some people are like, oh man, I don't even know what to think about my purpose or like me being aligned with my purpose. And so we kind of started with a few tools, like hmm. how to run better meetings. Um, and then we sort of got into money which no one really likes to talk about, but that was all Tuesday. It's hmm. like financials, but everyone has a relationship with money mm -hmm. yeah. and some people it's really good and some people it's really Shitty. bad. And AF. that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how much of it you have mm -hmm. or how much you don't have. Ooh. Uh, so book Facts. recommendation for everybody here and listening is written by Lynn Twist called The Soul of Money. Okay. That'll uh, teach you a lot about scarcity versus abundance and how that's completely a mindset and the way that the systems have been constructed throughout history since we've you know, been able to have credit cards and those kinds yeah. of things and debt, uh, the keeping up with Joneses. Yes, yes. Etc. People's always trying to steal my shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's trying to keep with you, Dwayne. Seriously. I love it. Um, I love it. It, it. We put it above everything. Yeah. We put it about family, relationships, ourselves, Ugh. everything. So <sighs> that book digs into kind of why that is and how some stories about how powerfully different that can be. Mm. So that was Tuesday. Ooh. And then Wednesday, we only did a session in the morning. Um, what were we talking about? I think about a little bit of relationships. And then we did that like four hour hike when Lauren had her giant meltdown uh, for once. Good. Which was great. Oh, it Good. was great. I needed it. And it was like an ugly cry. Oh, no. I like realized some shit about my dad and it was like ugly cry. Uh, but it was good. Good or bad take things? It was, it was good things. It was okay. good things. Here, I'll, I'll have my vulnerable moment. Okay? Do it. Here I'll tell go. everybody about this. Yeah, let's do it. So as we walked into the woods, hint, as we were told, whenever you walk into the woods, set an intention. So the intention for myself, because for whatever reason, and I don't get anxiety often at all. Mm. So for anybody that experiences anxiety on a daily basis, I lived through that for a minute. Um, all Wednesday morning while we were doing whatever work before we went on this walk, I had this like sickening rock of a knot like at the top of my stomach. And I just couldn't, I couldn't let it go. I was like, what is this? I was trying to like listen to it. Okay, what are you trying to tell me? That was the other thing we learned. Whenever you have pain, yeah. Don't freak out. Oh my God, I'm hurt. Oh my God. Yeah, like, your body's talking okay. to you. Listen to it. Yeah. Maybe it'll ease off. Maybe yeah. there's something else. Because mm. sometimes our yeah. mental stresses can manifest themselves physically. Facts. So we're all tied together, right? As much as we think we're not, we totally are. Mm. And so we walk into the woods, and my intention was what am I supposed to uncover and learn today? Okay. So we started walking, and we're barefoot. Some of us are barefoot. I decided to go barefoot because, you know me, I look, I'm barefoot Do it. right now. Yeah. Um, and I cut my foot in the first five minutes. Of course you did. <laughs> of course I did. But I didn't look down. Like, I knew that I had maybe nicked it on a rock. Mm. But, I mean, there's lots of leaves down. There's tons of moss in this forest and, like, needles. So you're not walking just, like, on rocks and sticks. It's, like, Animal this poop. interesting blanket of all this kind of stuff. So, anyways, I, I keep walking. And we come to this, like, 250-year-old maple tree. Mm. It's gorgeous. And we come to this like 200 year old oak tree, one of them representing feminine energy, the maple tree, the other one representing masculine energy, the oak tree. Hmm. All very, we're in like day three of this immersion. We're all like feeling it, right? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know it smells like some like voodoo hippie dippy shit. Go do it. You'll understand what I'm talking <laughs> about because I'm not that kind of person, but it was very meaningful. So anyways, we, did, we were doing this water walk. So we're walking um, up a river, like beside the river uh, to the source where all the water collects from the rain and everything starts to run downhill to the lake. So as we're walking through the woods, they're like, think about your life and where all of this started for you. Some of us had a shorter timeline to work through than others, which is great. Mine was not as particularly long, but we end up getting to the source about mm. you know, a half hour later or so, 40 minutes later. 
and uh, everyone kind of took 20, 25 minutes, I have no idea how long I was there, uh, to reflect by themselves just about the question was, or the suggestion was about source. Mm. So I was like, source, okay, okay. So I started to think about Linda yeah. and my mom's side of the family and how every female on that side is the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that like run the shit. They make decisions, like all strong backbone, but you know, good caregivers. And I was like, you know, I'm so thankful that I've inherited some of those things. And so naturally I start thinking about, okay, well, uh, other piece of the source, dad's side. Mm-hmm. And the first memory that came to me like crystal clear was when Hillary and I were kids and it was after Christmas and we were playing with the one thing that we wanted all Christmas, which was sock and boppers. Mm-hmm. I just remember those plastic blow up, like <laughs> fake boxing gloves things. Yeah, yeah. And we were in my grandmother's house, like wrestling in the front foyer. Wrestling. And immediately after that memory cup, like I just started losing my shit. Mm. Like I was ugly balling and I don't know if I've actually cried that hard about my dad passing away in the five years since he's been gone. Or if I have, it was before he actually passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then since then I've been, you know, I've, I've seen a therapist and stuff with certain trauma pieces around that, but, um, don't put a lot of thought into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the second thing that immediately came to me, we had done an exercise about forgiveness the day before. And I was kind of like, Oh, if I really have anyone to forgive. Like, I don't, not, don't feel like I'm harboring anything. Mm. That was a lie. Mm. So <laughs> the, second, the second thing that came to me after that memory was like, you need to forgive your dad. I was like, oh, there it is. Right before my dad passed away, he told me that it was my responsibility to take care of this family when he was gone. Oh, wow. And I really shouldered that burden yeah. for the last five years. And the expectations of me before that were very similar, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and so I think that was really just a carrying on of that. And so in my like mind- Like when he said it and you hear it, it's different. Yeah. yeah. And when I've said that to other people, that's exactly the reaction is like, Yeah, that's a lot shit. of pressure. Yeah. That's, some, that's a heavy comment to make. You don't just like say that. So I forgave him for choosing those words, Mm -hmm. but he didn't burden me with that. I burdened myself with that. But so I wrote a page in my, in this journal that I just like bawling. It's like snot and just like, (laughs) you know, and Mm -hmm. it was, it was grief for the things that he's missed and will continue to miss Mm -hmm. in particular. uh, And when you guys see Kyler on camera, um, that he'll never get to meet his seven foot grandson. That's the (laughs) thing that really, you know, like, yeah. Still stabs me in the heart a little bit. Uh, grateful for all the things he's gave me, given me uh, in terms of like the masculine qualities that I have that I think have made me really successful in a lot of different ways. Uh, and then just the forgiveness part. Mm. So that was like probably, and honestly, when I stood up, that ball of anxiety was totally gone. Mm. It mm. was removed from my body. What did that feel like? I was so much lighter and I like, yeah clean it all up and then steph at the same time had kind of maybe seen me get a kleenex out and was like "Mm, maybe i'm just gonna like wait a sec and then we started like went through the woods ourselves how did you sleep that night i got like a rock it was amazing yeah and that when you woke up in the morning how'd you feel and that's when i had that dream about you and kyler and the house (laughs) and the 11 prostitutes (laughs) <laughs> yo, Lord hits me with the text. So, yo, Lord hits me with the text random, yo. And I was like, Ooh. seriously, okay. Here's here's the dream. Here's the dream, real quick, because Lauren's dreams don't always make sense. So some of these women that I'm with are having like meaningful, like, oh my god, wow, dreams. They're waking up. Like that was a message. What did you dream about last night? I was like, well, oh. I walked up to a two-story house, looked very North Endish, like flat top, kind of okay. sloped driveway. And Terrence and Kyler lived together in this house. <laughs> Not, I didn't live in the house. Those two lived together in the house. Uh-oh. And so I walk in and Terrence goes, I'm just supposed to step out. Do you want to you smoke a joint with me? And I said, uh. I said, well, you know, they just passed the new law. The hmm. cops are probably out with like road stops. I don't want to smoke a joint and then drive home and get caught. Hmm. So you're like, okay, cool. And so you just like left the house. So <laughs> I walk into the bathroom to sneak up on Kyler. He's 
bent over the sink brushing his teeth and he gets super pissed that I like scared him. And I was like, <laughs> okay, man, sorry, just chill, which is not his typical reaction. I come back out. My ex's best friend shows up in a cop uniform because he's a cop now. I don't know why he's in Halifax. And he says that he's just like looking for prostitutes. And I'm like, I don't know anything about any <laughs> prostitutes around here. And he's like, all right, cool. And then he leaves. And so I come back in. <laughs> and then <laughs> Kyler and my sister are making out in the bathroom. And I'm like, what? what is this shit? And they just like stop. And Hillary's just like, well, I'm going to go anyways, because I'm dieting for a bikini show, and i got to go get my water pills. And I'm like, you all right? Get out of here. And I'm looking at Kyler. I'm like, what is going on? And he's like, what? Knock oh, the, on the door. <laughs> oh, the story gets better. There's a knock on the door. There's four cops at the door. My ex's bestie, his three colleagues, one of them's a female cop, they walk in. All of a sudden, you know how you like, just jump in your dream like you're just somewhere else? I'm now in the basement. <laughs> With 11 prostitutes, uh -oh. they're not dressed like ladies of the evening. They're just dressed in like sweat clothes. But I know this. Like in my, I, I know this. And they're trying to hide from these cops. And I don't mm -hmm. know why. You guys aren't harboring what? them. You're just like letting them stay there like as a safe house or something. <laughs> and so eight of them, not all 11, are trying to get out. Eight are trying to get out. So yeah. I'm like, I do not, but I can hear the cops walking around upstairs. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, <laughs> but I'm going to like try and get out of here. So they're talking to, I guess, Kyler and he's trying to like, I don't know what's going on. You're not back in the picture. No. And I like, remember, obviously there's prostitutes the in the basement because my car's outside and I open the door, I slowly close it. And then I start, you know, like in the movies as, as, as they're rounding one corner of the house, you're trying to go around the other corner so they can't see you. So I'm doing this, and then I can, the female cop's the only one, like, smart enough in the situation to figure out what's going on. She's like, hmm, whose car is that outside? Uh-oh. Kyler's like, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> and she's like, well, the back door's open, and there's a set of car keys there, and I'm, like, hearing this, and I'm, like, looking up under the window, <laughs> trying not to get caught, and then the alarm went off. Wow, what does that mean? <laughs> Everyone's like, what do you think that means? I'm like, I don't think it means anything. I think it's just dream shenanigans. You were free. Your mind was free <laughs> that night, so it went to so very random of places. So yeah, there was wow. two more days of like, so that was the first three days. The last two days, just to sum it up, was, was actually the personal deep dive stuff. Mm. So talking about, so this is some yogi stuff, but the soul has four desires. You have your purpose. You have your resources, like the gifts that were innately given to you to carry yeah. out your life's purpose. Pleasure, which most yogis have a hard time with, but you enjoy nature and art and food and beauty and all these kinds of things. And yeah, banging. And then... Why do they have a hard time with it? Because a lot of yogis at times feel like their like repentance or they're more the suffering type is, the, is the journey. Right. Mm, yeah. The suffering, suffering is the, in the journey. journey. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. So, you're not suffering, then are you progressing or growing? What is a yogi? You know, like those yoga, yoga mentality kind of people. Not necessarily like yoga moms and yoga pants, but like people that are in the practice like of the, that lifestyle. Like with the long kind of scraggly hair. I'm not sure. And the Maybe. like untamed Maybe chests. I don't know if that's what qualifies them more so. The I like would say just people who mythology. are more, they're like consistent regular yoga practitioners or it's a way mm. of life more so than just yeah oh, there's something i do you know yeah and they might not be like yogis yoga teachers or anything but yeah but just yeah be like living their lifestyle like that yeah and the last soul's desire is freedom so if you get all those things in line you're probably like getting it out of the park hmm. and so it was third party writing exercises you had to write tributes as if you were having like your 80th or 100th birthday and you're going to have one person that could represent you in each of those categories, pay tribute to you, and talk about all the things that you did in your life that were unbelievable. And so mm. this is like sort of your unconscious being like, these are all the things that you want to accomplish in your life. Oh, mm. shit. The last exercise, you need to write your own eulogy. From a third-party perspective. <sighs> what? It's heavy. Oh, yeah. But very telling. So all these exercises, what you're the not, you're not like thinking about it. You're not like, hmm. What is it that I want to achieve? You're looking at it from somebody else's perspective, and then it's like, you have a certain amount of time, start writing. Go. And, mm -hmm. the, and you don't judge your spelling. Whatever comes out, comes out. You don't reread it. Like, 
And literally, as I'm doing these exercises, I would get to the end of one and I knew when I was done because mm -hmm. I had nothing else to write. Yeah. Like literally nothing else came to my hand. To, and I was like, okay, hey, great, next one. And so when you start looking at certain verbiage or phrases in what you've written, it starts to uncover or present itself as clues as to what, A, the, the unconscious beliefs you're trying to uncover. Yeah. Or the things that you're dreaming for yourself. It's the things that you won't admit to yourself because you're mm -hmm. guilty or you feel shame yeah. or any of those kinds of things. Yep. Yeah. Um, that'll surprise you. It would it's, I know it surprised the hell out of all of us. You wrote your own eulogy from, from my sister's somebody perspective. else's perspective. Yeah. Wow. I, I can't lie. I think about that all the time, though. Maybe that's a weird thing. I, I think I read something one, at one point from a business expert who, who said they wrote a thing about death being a motivator or something like that. And ever since then, I've been... That's been my whole thing. I don't want to die knowing that I didn't try my best. And that was exactly it. It was like, when she framed the exercise, she was like, because we're asking questions, right? We're like, oh, so like if tomorrow, she's like, no, like if this minute, this happened, what would someone say about your life? What would be all the things that you would celebrate? What would yeah. be the things that, you know, all that's left is the residue of the things that you wanted to accomplish. Yeah. I was like, oh, that sounds terrible. So you get out on paper those things that, you haven't dealt with yet that you know you got to deal with and you've been putting off. Yeah. Those are the things that kind of come up. So I know it sounds like some hippy dippy shit and maybe it is, but I'm telling you it's effective. So, and we, and wow. all six of us left there are feeling Whoa. so light yeah. and rested yeah. and amazing. Yeah. Mm. So, Good for you. Thank you. Totally worth it for Good lots of for other you. people. Your energy does seem different today. It's different. I walked in on Friday and Kyler was like, whoa. I don't even, what did you even say to me? You're just like, you're feeling better or something like that. Like, how you doing? Yeah, it was noticeable. Yeah. You didn't look bad. No, I didn't look bad. Like, during the week, like, even the women in the, in, with me are like, you look more well rested. Like, I, my dark circles in my eyes were leaving. Mm. I didn't feel this like impending, oh my God, there's so many deadlines. Like, what am I going to do? It was just like, it's all good, man. Yeah. It's all good. So yeah, I'm, I'm just like taking it like that now. I'm going to try and preserve this. And I worked out four days in a row. Yeah, you did. I Whoa. ate three okay. amazing meals a day. Yeah, you did. And I slept incredibly well. Yeah. It was okay. like all the things, all good. of these like amazing practitioners yep. like gathered around. It was like. The simplest shit that we know we should be doing that mm -hmm. we just don't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good for you, yo. Amazing. No, I want to go wind horse. Right? Seriously. Where is wind horse? Like down in the valley-ish. Yeah. Nova Scotia is still though, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nova Scotia. But anybody can go walk the land at any point. So, okay. But if you want to like stay in a lodge, I think you got to book it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But it's wow. so amazing. It sounds eye-opening. Yeah. Very. Kind of like my adventures to the other side of the world. But Absolutely. I don't think I was eye-open in the ways that you were. I had the supported environment, though. You were totally on a solo <laughs> journey, right? Fuck. So our... Our digging around Man. was facilitated. So yeah. my trip didn't go as planned. Yeah. Fuck I know. Fucking yeah. life said, fuck you, buddy. For real. Um, so I was in, I'd gone to Scotland shooting for 18 days. Um, I rode in 50 Ubers in 18 days. I stayed in like four or five different Airbnbs. Mm. Um, and I interviewed like 30 people and shot 865 gigabytes of footage. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So after that, I was tired and it was the very last day of my Scottish adventures. And it's 9.30 in the morning, and I get a message from the, the yoga retreat. So I had planned the 13 days in Greece, yoga meditation, like three vegetarian meals a day, four to six hours of meditation a day. Wow. And I was like, That's that shit sounds crazy, but you know what? If I can fucking do that, we're fucking winning. So, and I needed that controlled environment. 
mm-hmm. of like, here's what we need to do. And you don't have a say, you're just going to do it. Mm. And I needed that. Mm. <clears throat> Nine thirty comes. So Mr. Taylor, um, we see that, uh, cause I had emailed them. We, we see that you're asking about a reservation for September 23rd. We actually booked you for October 23rd. Hmm. So your reservation actually doesn't exist. And I was supposed to fly out the next day. Your reservation actually doesn't exist. Um, there's a, there's nothing we can do about it. So I said, I was like, my heart like sunk in my whole body. Cause I was exhausted mm. at that point already. Yeah. And was like, I need this retreat. I just need to go. And it didn't happen. So then, cause I was just an emotional mess. Mm-hmm. Instead of coming up with like a legit backup plan, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to go. So I went to Greece. I was like, I'll just find a nice Airbnb, a nice place, and a nice little villa with a pool and shit. It's like, go relax. Because you know what I want to be doing right now? Nothing. Mm. So get the villa, get on a plane, get on another plane, get in a taxi, get to the villa. Villa is beautiful. Yeah. But I'm in the middle of nowhere. At a time when I had been planning on like focused, mm. like learning and like intentional doing, mm. I was in the middle of no. Okay, so in Greece, the their Wi-Fi operates like our cell phone data. Okay. So if you watch Netflix for four hours, yeah, you've used all of your house data. Jeez, it's gone. <laughs> Do you get more like uh, the you have next to day? Call and buy more uh-huh. like if you went over on your phone and it's not like you can go over and they charge you more no the shit just turns off so i was there i had no internet mm. um i really needed to be doing more intentional things and i had nothing to do hadn't been smoking cannabis for three weeks and i was just out of whack mm-hmm. and at a time when i needed structure and i had none i do what i oftentimes do when i'm in a Shitty place, feeling exhausted, and in the hole, I said, mm. where's the booze? Mm-hmm. Mm. And me and booze, tongue kiss for like five straight days mm. to the point where I was like, if I, and I, because I had three weeks of vacation. Yeah. I said, if I stay here another day, I'm going to keep doing this. Like, I'm not going to stop. I would like wake up, drink till I could pass out fall asleep and then be up like random hours of the night and wake up the next day and like shuttle into the town and get more booze and come back and just do it again. Oh man. And it was like, bro, I was just like, what is going on here? Were there tourists around? Like were there like places you could go to party at least? I need to stop booking fucking places in the middle of nowhere. So there weren't even like clubs you could go to or anything like that? Like an hour walk. Uh, so I kind of I just you know and I blame myself but I was really just like not in a good space to be even making decisions like mm. the week before I left Halifax I was just like going so fast that I was just doing stupid shit mm. we were shooting courses <clears throat> I shoot six courses I put the thumb the SD card in the computer upload the courses think I uploaded all the courses uploaded half the courses Mm. erase the thumb drive take it out check the drive and see there's only half the courses and the person who we shot the course doesn't even live in the city Mm. (laughs) and i'm sitting here like what the fuck are you doing but Mm. just like trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to go here trying to get that and doing all this shit i was Mm. like man what the fuck get sucked into it comes this like spiral of- Sean you said it earlier you're so in it that you don't you don't even realize you're in it and it wasn't and I and it was it sucked the worst because I was like I was like I was hoping just to get to Scotland because I was like Scotland will be the break and then yeah. Scotland was like three weeks of like yeah turn up 
Yeah. And I was like, whoa, I'm toast. I yeah. probably drank every day for like, every day for like 27 days. Jeez. Oh my God. Going. Just alone and feeling shitty and sad and depressed and just like, ah, it's not going to get any better. Whoa. So if we're going this way, let's just fucking keep going this way till we hit the wall. Whoa, then, yeah. yeah, that's what happened. And then that's what happened. Yeah. That's what, and I was like, you know what, guys? I need to come back. I can't be here. Like, I'm literally going, I can, f- I'm, you know, when you're in it and like you're in the spiral and you're aware of it. Yeah. 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 I was just like, nah. Yeah. And then my mind was like, bro, you have to get out of here mm-hmm. or it's it shit's going. I saw his left. Yeah. Came back. I probably worked less than I've ever worked since I started this shit. And I said, it ain't worth it. I did all that work, got this gear, whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. Now what? We're just going to keep working to just keep. No. Today, I'm not going to do shit today. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You fucking deserve it. You didn't take, you don't take days off for fucking three years. You get this afternoon. You know what? Sleep until 1130. That Netflix show you watched last night, watch it again in the morning. Don't even do anything. Mm. All right, fine. I'm not doing shit today. You know how I felt when I get up after that? Great. Then I get all my shit done. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't rewarding myself with rest. Well, yeah, the whole idea of hustle 24-7 is (laughs) dumb. Like what Mike was talking about, like the Gary Vee thing. Stupid, yo. You know, it's... you. Everybody needs, that's why I make myself play basketball on Tuesdays. Even if I don't feel like it, it mentally clears me out. Yeah. It's something that I really love to do. Yeah. And it's good exercise. If I don't do that, I don't exercise at all. Yeah. So. And I wasn't working out or nothing right. either. It's just, you just need it, man. You have to make yourself. I was being mean to people. Right. Why are you just, really? Just, just like mean. Random? Just there's well, people that's so unlike there was, too, right? and there's the, here's what it was i was on the other side of the world alone mm. looking for a connection from the people that mattered to me and when i uh. didn't get it the way i wanted it i just fucking snapped uh. and it was only because i was like i just want somebody to care about me right now because right. i feel like nobody does uh. and i just like bro like in a bad place uh. like a bad place but it was like all right self-awareness kicks in because it shit, shit does i was like it was like day five i was like bruh so i came back to my people came back to get some real love because yeah. that shit wasn't over on the other side of the world i'll tell you that right now mm-hmm. so now i'm just glad to, i'm just happy to be home well welcome back man thank Jeez. you yeah i appreciate that that's 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 hard and you got face you're like you get that alone time. You're kind of forced to to look in the mirror. I didn't like what I was looking at. Mm. Yeah. Oh, some of the other advice that I got on my week. There's gonna be lots of this. Oh, the other thing that I learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the other thing I learned. Yeah. Tell me if I'm getting obnoxious. Um, was that? And I say this, and again, we always <laughs> we can't take the advice that we give other people, right? We don't take it for ourselves. Right. Right. Just what I learned is that I need to share my greatest gifts. Not just with other people, but also myself. Because that's my problem. That was the unconscious belief that I uncovered about myself. Was that I so badly want to maximize my potential that I sabotage myself by not giving myself the best things that I give other people. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. There's an interesting thing. But Eesh. the lesson is be kind to yourself. Yeah, so yeah. when you're spiraling or when you've done something you think is stupid, don't berate yourself about it. Or if you're learning something and you're trying to get a new habit, like be nice to yourself about it. Mm-hmm. It's all yeah. good. Just be a little more gentle. Yeah. The way you would be with somebody else. Yeah. But we don't do that for ourselves. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was mean. Right. We need love. We if, guess what? If we don't love ourselves. Ain't nobody else gonna love you. Mm-hmm. Hit them. Hit them with the cliches. <laughs> Sandra, get your ass up here. Yay! We're just gonna punch them quick or what? Yeah, we're going to get in. I know Lowe's Lowe's like, yo, I'm tired, yo. I'm actually, you know what? That's the thing. You're in there. My energy levels are like. Good? Cool. Yo, there's two. Yo, you coming up too? Yeah, come on. We only got one mic for you, but you guys can share one mic. We got two chairs for you. Come on. Come on up. 
Oh, there's lots of chairs. Sandra. 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 Hey, Sandra. Sandra. You don't like my song? It's a new, like it's a new song? hit right there. <laughs> Yeah. It's alright. It's okay. It's alright. It's okay. Do you guys, beat. y'all gotta make sure you're talking to that microphone just because we gotta make sure that the people hear you. So get up close. We, we have another mic. It's coming. Just not tonight. So when you come back next time. Just, we'll just lean in. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, I'm loving that scarf. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's Sandra come correct. You know, you guys already know. <laughs> you already know. Okay, so we got a website coming. Thanks to Mike Tanner. Much love. On the website, there will be a blog because people like to read words. Some, some do. Some people like to read <laughs> words. Um, and hello. Hello. Oh, you sound great. She sounds beautiful. Uh, Sunday. What are you saying, G? Talk a little louder. What are you saying? You can hear me or hey, what? Hey, there you go. He sounds better now. He sounds better now. Okay, cool. So we got a website. People like to read words. Sanders here. So that's another team. So we're really just introducing our team. We're reintroducing our team because you've been on the mic before. So you, you know what's going on. People know what's going on. But... You got some other shit on the go. Uh, me and my friend Tunde here started a news agency. <gasps> oh, okay. Very exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> um, As, go ahead. Talk about it. You go ahead. You want to speak? It's your brain baby, so. <laughs> um, I decided to start a, it's a black, uh, black news agency. What's it called? The Objective News Agency. The Objective News Agency. Yeah, a little okay. play on words of the objective. Sandra will break that down afterwards. For sure. But, uh, okay. I've always, um, I don't know, I've always been interested in media. Uh, I grew up in certain neighborhoods where I've seen how the media portrays my community. Where are you from? Teal. Okay. So I've seen that, so I was like, nah, nah. I've always grew up in around the media. My parents are media freaks. My family like works in the States down in the media. So anyways, um, went to journalism school, always had the idea to do it. And uh, I was like, we need, especially living in Halifax, where it's like, coming from Toronto, you kind of think of Halifax as the black Mecca. Like, that's what we think. Really? Oh, really? 100%. Oh, 100. That's interesting. Really? Because in Teal, we're all like, we're, you know, we all came from different countries. Right. Or our parents did. We spoke different languages, different, we had weird names. Right. So we're never really included in Canadian society. But we're right. like, whoa, over in the East Coast, he'd been there right. for 400 years. Right. You know what I mean? So wow. they must got it locked. So when I came out here, I'm like, yo, this Never. is worse than T.O. <laughs> 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 this is crazy. <laughs> and uh, so I just wanted to highlight some of the things that are happening in our communities. And uh, I was doing it myself at the beginning. And I'm like, no, nah, I need help. But not only do I need help, I need the best. Hey. And then Sandra was there. And I'm like, Sandra, what are you doing? She's like, yo, I'm freelance ain't doing nothing yeah. I'm like yo come through <laughs> yeah so we've just been doing it from there mm. and on so you're you're writing you're mm. like you're speaking what what's happening okay so what we're doing is a series of video investigations okay so um that is gonna make up season one and then we move on what to is season this video see what an investigation. So it's kind of like a documentary, but it's not, it's not quite a documentary because the style is very different. It's kind of, it's more gritty than that. So you're going to follow us along with the things we learn as we learn them. Okay. And we've broken it down into um, four parts for the first season. So how the, the company basically works for our investigations is that it goes season by season, big investigation, like one at a time. Right. And... Um, we're starting in Nova Scotia, where we have the uh, oldest population of, of Africans in Canada. Right. And oh, what we found, what Tunde already knew this, and a lot of people already know this, this is old news in a lot of ways, because the information is out there, and a lot of people are aware of it, except for those in 
decision making positions, I guess. Right. Cause we've spoken to quite a few politicians who had never heard of IPPs, which are uh, individual program plans. Mm. Here, it's oh, it's yeah. a type of yeah. special education, basically, yeah. although it can be used for, for gifted students as well, although one out of a thousand cases doesn't quite make that the rule. Right. Um, so we found that um, there was this report done in 2016 that was showing that in 34% of the cases where there was a black student on IPP, it wasn't necessarily the best thing for them. Right. Is this tied to the black report? It's not oh. tied to the black report. Okay. So he wants to look no, for no. you. This, is, this was a minister's report that didn't receive any media follow-up. Oh, okay. One person mentioned it, and uh, she moved on to <laughs> greener pastors. <laughs> and <laughs> gotcha. it was just a side note. So, so the issue here is that that's 66% of the black learners who were on IPP that was decided to be the most appropriate program for them. That's compared to 87% of the white students who are on IPP. The most appropriate for them. Mm. So wow. one in three black students on IPP may not have needed to, to be in that program. And the program is individualized per person, but the thing that's the same is that it ends up ultimately holding most people back because yeah. there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through to yeah. get to post-secondary, even yeah. just to get to trade school. Yeah, and the credits don't line up and you get on IPP and then you don't have what you need to go on the post-secondary university. And So yeah, just to kind of break it down, like for me, I, I'm from TO and I grew up in, in the hood in a housing project. Most of, our, most of the black kids are put in special ed. So I was put in special ed. Right. I'm a guy, I have multiple degrees. I went to some of the <laughs> finest universities on earth. Right. I studied at Beijing Normal University. I studied at uh, Hyundai University. They showed the 50 top students to go there to learn Korean financial instruments and economics. So basically what I'm explaining to you is I didn't need to be in special ed. Now that none of right. the cats I grew up with <laughs> needed to be in special ed. Right. So here's the thing. I was talking to my nephew about it the other day and we're, go we're breaking down the list of all of our old friends. Yo, where's this guy? Where's that guy? Oh, he's dead. He got murked. The other guy got shot. Oh, that, oh the, the whole crew went to jail. Oh, those guys are all bums. Right. So then you have to really sit down and, and figure, we're all in special ed growing up. Is this mm. a schools to prison pipeline? So then <laughs> afterward, they come to Halifax, right. and it's the same thing. Yeah. If you're a black student, you're one in three times more likely to put on special ed than a white student. There's nothing cognitively wrong with our children. Right. So I volunteer with a group called 902 Man Up, and we go into the prisons, and we speak to counselors, we speak to, to jail guards, we speak to all these guys. And I, so we ask questions like, yo, how many kids are in special ed? They give me the dumbest look and be like, yo, most of them, we are talking about? They're, they're all special ed kids. Right. IPP is special ed. I just right. kind of just yeah, yeah. shorthand mm -hmm. that. So that's, what we're, that's the first investigation. It, does Nova Scotia have a schools to prison pipeline? We've spoken to people that have worked <laughs> In education, yeah. we spoke to former teachers, we spoke to guys on the street. So basically how this works is that, as what Sandra was saying, it's a special investigation. You come along with us in this as we investigate it. Right. We don't do that McDonald's journalism. We don't just go to a place and see a crime scene and be like, report on it. Right. We do the W5H. I learned that when I was like six years old from my dad. The who, what, where, why, when, and how. Yeah. That's how you break down a story. So we go in. We investigate it, and you follow us along in that investigation. Right. So we break everything down, tell you how everything, how everything goes, and we give you explanation as to why. That's, that's episode one. Episode two, three, and four, which we're going to be uh, premiering at, uh, during African Heritage Month at, TD, at the uh, TD Center down at uh, the library, that okay. auditorium there. Yeah. Episode two, three, and four is that we're going to follow along what happens to our black learners when they go out into the real world. Right. We already done know what happens to them in the real world. Yeah. But we're going to follow mm -hmm. along and explain to people how this is. And to show you how real this is, Sandra and I, we, uh, we already cut up four trailers for this. So we made four trailers. Okay. We showed it. We got, we, we got allowed to go to a teacher's conference. We showed at the teacher's conference. Silence. <laughs> Not one word. Yeah. Then I stood up and said, okay, fine. Challenge my journalistic integrity. Name one thing in there that wasn't journalistically accurate. No one said nothing. Right. They all know. I get, I'm getting texts right now. I just got a text like 10 minutes ago and I was sitting there. One guy basically, yo, I can't 
through text, you could, te- you could feel emotion. Right. Yo, the guy was like, yo, man, I'm sorry, man. I want to speak to you now. He's a teacher. This just happened like 10 minutes ago because he's wow. seen the video and seen what happens to these kids. Yeah. Well, who's going to pipe up in the middle of the... What's that? Who's going to pipe up in the middle of their peers when you guys show this, what? right? To be like, yeah, you're totally right. Right. I know yeah. a few that would. Yeah, so if well, I uh, just too so bad you they know, weren't there. Yeah. If, yeah. If you need to talk to some people in education, I know some black principals and. One hundred. I we we one hundred. Yeah. One hundred. <laughs> and the, the the thing is, is that um, as what Sandra was saying earlier, none of our media is covering this. Now I'm not disparaging my my classmates, but I went to school with them. I know their thought patterns. I read the paper. There's been the Toronto Star. Not Toronto Star. It's owned by Toronto Star. But the Halifax Metro did a whole month-long investigation on schools, special investigation. Not one thing about IPPs. Or black students. Or black students. IPPs is the most, is, is the most important thing in black education today right now. Yeah, and they nice. didn't say one word. You know what they spoke about? Teachers don't have enough money. Teachers don't have enough chalk. Um, Parents uh, not wanting to send their kids to public school. Not wanting to send their kids to public school because, because the public schools aren't good. How much of our black families could afford to go to what a private school? <laughs> like, no, and, and that's, yeah. and for us, that's why we started the objective because we need to highlight the things that are important in the black communities because slowly but surely they're dying. And moreover than that, I showed some of the trailers to my family and other people in Toronto. And they're just like, what the heck is going on over there? Because we thought, again, this is the black Mecca. Right. <laughs> I thought I was coming to Chicago or Atlanta when I got out here. I thought I was going to come here to prosperity and riches. Right. And everything's going to be gravy. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But to yeah. see that hmm. everything's the same over here. And, and, and I got to even be more real because when I was in Asia, I, that's how I kind of got into journalism. I was, I was doing a blog and I was talking about some of the racism in Canada. I got a lot of flack from Canadians that were emailing me back saying, don't tell the world how bad we are. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's like, you should be happy you're here. You're here. The, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I'm, like, oh, I'm not going to stop calling out the bullshit. No. Right. So, and, and, and so therein lies the rub. So I think me highlighting some of the issues that are happening in Nova Scotia, which is the, the most historic black place in Canada, right. it's going to show other Canadians that, yo, listen, there's a real problem over there, and they're going to ask, what can we do to help? Right. Right? Mm. Yeah, these are common problems. Like, this, the school, school to prison pipeline, that's an American thing. That's the U.S. It's been proven. A lot of the same criteria that make up that pipeline exist here in Nova Scotia. It's just that because it's been done in the States, it's like there's just so many things that have been done in the United States that haven't been done in Canada because we just assume that it's true. There are people doing research on this stuff. There are people who have stats that they can't share because it's private. Uh, or, or, or maybe it's government and it's an internal document. But there, it's like no one has thought to cover this as a news story because it's just not considered news. And that's where the title, The Objective, comes in as well because it's a bit of a play on words because we call it the objective news agency, even though we're not doing like general everyday news coverage. Right. And that's because we're kind of poking fun at this concept of obje- objectivity because someone has to decide uh, what is relevant. Like what's, when you're deciding what the news is, there's no shortage of news. News is coming in all the time. And then you have to decide what's important. And what's important always has a white face on it. And that's not really objective. So we call ourselves the objective <laughs> news agency because we, We're objective, we want to be fair and accurate and transparent, but we also want to be clear about what is our objective. Like, you're gonna see black faces because that's our objective, so. (laughs) Right, right. Good for you. And this starts, yeah, it starts when? Or it's already started, no? We've already started the investigations already. Um, I've been, these investigations, and I I got these investigations just from walking around the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Because like, wherever you go, you have to, Listen, I grew up in, t- listen, where I grew up, you just, you got to know things like this. You know right. what I'm saying? So just walking around and catching, okay, well, this is happening, this is happening. You put two and two together, you connect the dots. Right. So this investigation I've already had for years. Sandra and I started working on it in the summer. As I said, it's going to premiere during African Heritage Month. Um, the trailers will go live next week. Nice. Um, the trailers are shocking, man. Like, I'm, like, there's not one person. When I send somebody, somebody these trailers, I get usually one word. It's either wow, wow or 
WTF yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Like it's something crazy. So yeah. if you're coming on next week. We're crowdfunding. Um, you know, basically, and it's just us. We've already, yo, we've already gotten offers. I've already had offers of people saying, I will pay for your entire documentary. First of all, I'm like, no. Good. And they've offered. Yeah. But these were from governments and bodies of organizations I do not want to accept money from. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? So we're looking for community support. Right. Because we want, to, we want the community to feel involved because we're doing it for the community. Right. And just to even show how, how like, deep our investigation is and the things that we are talking about, if you look on our Twitter, our Facebook, and all that, it's people from all communities because they're all concerned about it. Right. And they all want to know, and they all realize, yo, no, no, I really want to hear what's happening in the black community. I can't, I can't just trust the Metro or any of these guys to give me what's popping right. in the black community. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. So, hmm. yeah, for she's, if I can do a little plug, or no, you're going to say? No, please. Go. Plug it. Plug, plug it. everything. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook at The Objective NS. That's it. And that's where we can so find excited. the trailers next week. Next, next week. Well, yes, right. We're launching the crowdfunding next week or uh, Early, mid this week. Well, yeah, mi uh, er, uh, late, late, late week of November. If you first. check in next week on our social media, first you, week of November, right? Yeah, you will find all of the updates that you need. Do it, do it, and uh, oh, that's cool. First of all, that's cool. And how long have you actually been in Nova Scotia for? Uh, it's coming up on eight years. Oh, so you, oh. so you, you, yeah, you, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it. I dig it. Um, anything else you'd like to share? You want to plug any personal stuff? Anybody to follow you along anywhere else? You got anything else on the go? Do you want to share? No? Yes? She got an eye on it. Like I got something, but I don't know. I'm also, um, <clears throat> the beat reporter for the coast uh, on affordable housing, housing in general. So if you have any tips on housing, uh, send them to me on Twitter or Facebook. It's Sandra C. Hannabom. That's a doozy to spell the last name. It's H-A-N-N-N -N -N as in Nikki. E-B-O-H-M. Hannabom. Boom like home. Boom like home. <laughs> yeah. S-A-N-D-R-A-C-H-A-N-N. E B O H M. Wow. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. you. I'm excited for about that. Coming and thanks for inviting us. Tunday. 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 You yeah. got you got any any personal shit you want to plug too? Mm -hmm. I do this morning, noon, and night. I don't sleep, G. Like Good. real talk. This is. It's, I I tell everybody, yo, I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for Sandra. I'm doing it for the youths out there. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. this is us 24/7. Yo, come through, man. People, yo, people want to, like you said, like, we came out here, Sandra invited me because she's like, you need to meet other people that are doing the same things yep. on different realms. You know yep. what I'm saying? For sure. And I was a little bit like, uh, no, nah, because I'm not sure what the people are doing. Like, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, come through. She's yeah. like, yeah. And just to see the fact that, you know, Art pays me here, you're here. You know, I listen to a lot of stories about your father and different things. I'm learning different things, hearing what people are having to say. Right. And it is real, like, us as I'm, not gonna, I'm using the, the word youth in quotes, but we are going to we run the cut right now. Yep. The elders ain't saying nothing, right? And that's cool. Right. It's not their job now. It's for us <laughs> now to do that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They're there just for guidance. So it's good to come out here and seeing young people do their thing. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yay. Much love, man. Thanks, Thanks for guys. Yes. So much. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Squatty! I didn't know you were doing all that. That's dope. Squatty! You gotta come this side now, dude. Squatty! <laughs> yeah, yo, don't some, forget Lord Queen, Lord, yo. Lord, 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 Lord. Don't forget Lord Queen, yo. Um, who we pulling up here next? Damn it, Sean. <laughs> Come on, Pai. Sean's over. Sean looks too comfy. Yo, boy, we we gotta get him out. I know he's like, I got a minute away from these babies. I'm about to catch me a little snoozy <laughs> over here. But Sean, he's in the building. Sean McMullen of the Halifax Social Network. No, you don't. That's listen. Amazing. That's a sword that needs to be pulled at the, at the yeah. social network. Let the people bring them to the social network. You hear that? You hear that? You got another plug. <laughs> I'm gonna extend the invite. Yeah. Slide over here. Slide over here. We good? We good? Is this? This is good here. Yeah. You. Let me see what you sound like. How do I sound? 
Oh, you sound great. Do I? You sound good. You sound good. So you're here. You're here for what? The this is your first time on the actual mic, it which is, doesn't make yeah. any sense because you came to an episode and hung out and chilled and watched. I, sl- I think I slept on the couch then. Too. You might have slept on the couch as well. And then we actually <laughs> interviewed Laura and Meech. Yes. Had Halifax Social Network episode. Right. Alfred got a whole fucking month. Yeah. What was that about? <laughs> Alfred's a guy and we was on vacation. So <laughs> Alfred got a lot of love. Um, so you're the last. Well, no. And you, you have more, more team members now, too. Uh, my wife, Ruth. Yes, Ruth. But yes. You're, you're here. I'm here. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that I'm here. Why do you think you're here? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Because we're friends. Yeah. Uh, and I'm filming something. For you guys yeah, you got you got ideas i got ideas i last time i was here you look I, tired i'm tired <laughs> i'm tired i'm not gonna lie i'm rubbing my eyes but i don't know i just had this idea that i wanted to help you guys out with my video stuff and yeah. photography and whatever i can do to help you guys because i like being part of things that are um being aligned with people in the city who are doing things uh, to make the city a better place to live, to right. work, to play in. Um, so if my video can help, you know, of you guys doing your, do, doing your thing and can help bring more awareness to it, then I'm going to do it. So you take photographs. I do. That's your, like, primary... Mm, that's my side gig. What's your first gig? I work full-time for a technology company called Viewpoint.ca. Okay. It's a real estate map okay. company. We're in Bedford. Um, I've been doing that for eight years nice. since the beginning, but I also have been a photographer for a lot longer. I actually used to be a journalist. I went to really? Royalist College in Belleville, Ontario okay. for mm. print journalism okay. <laughs> just when it died out <laughs> 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 and uh, moved back here and worked as a freelancer for the Herald and made no money and anyway, ended up at Viewpoint. And with writing skills, writing skills are something that everyone should have. Right. Mm. No matter For sure. what industry you're right. in. But, no pun. Um, no pun. Anyway, so where was I? I'm, you're writing. Mm, writing. You're for, photographer. You're for, yeah. And I do wedding videography on the side to kind of, I don't know, I just like seeing people get married and I find filming it is easy money. Because <laughs> I, I don't find it work. I'm just like, I'm going to eat, drink. I'm going to make something beautiful for people I usually end up becoming friends with. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a good way to live. Cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you got babies. I and got he's a hubby. Three kids. I'm married to a beautiful woman, Ruth. Uh, three children Zoe, Jackson, Owen. Eight year old, six year old, and four year old. So yeesh. It's uh, yeesh. And you're is, still a baby yourself. I'm only 32. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we did it. We did life opposite of what most people do now, but, uh, Anyway, it's worked out pretty well. We just celebrated 12 years marriage together. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. Yeah. And she looks like she's never had children. I, yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. 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 No, like Ruth she's fresh is like... I look in the mirror, I'm like, damn. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Dad vibe 101. Okay. <laughs> I am getting back into it, but... Uh, Good. Back into the gym and with my brother and stuff. But, nice. Uh, anyway, yeah. And you're one of the co-founders of... Well, Social... Every- well, yeah, co- you technically be a co-founder. Yeah. Yeah, of Halifax Social Network. Yep. We just celebrated our 10th event, official event. Nice. Not counting all the side events. Yeah. Right. We've grown from 20 people at our first meeting to the last one at the Distilling Co. I think we capped it at, like, I think there was almost 100 people. Nice. Wow. Good for you. Um, Good for all you guys. Yeah, and we've had such a wide variety of people come in and share their stories, and it's it's beautiful, and... and you know, it's, there's you know, tears and and laughter and everything that goes along with someone sharing intimate details about what whatever they feel they want to share. You guys have been to an event and you know what it's like. Right. But uh, now hearing your guys' story, it'd be perfect to spread information like that to like this the people in the city that don't hear about. Right. Because the social network's all about uh, just I don't know. I'm not, I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but regular people. We, we feature, we have speakers that come that are not, you know, I don't care if you're like a Fortune 500 guy or you're, you're a university student and you just beat cancer. 
You did have some Hollywood movie star on the yeah, last one. We did, but he was in town. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, that's pretty cool. That, that was pretty cool. That was, that pretty was cool, but that's not typical. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. He was in town. We hit it off with him through a, the, the Twins documentary that they right. did. And, I was just going to say, right. Alfred did not know this motherfucker, too. No. no, <laughs> he did. no uh, anyway, Ruth had met him, and then uh, him and I and nice. went out to dinner, and whatever. He came and supported us. So gotcha. it was cool. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. That's where I'm at. How cool. is Halifax social network life? It's good. It's busy. It's, I was saying to people earlier, it's kind of grown beyond what Meech and I ever thought it would be. The first one, I mean, when you were there. Yes. And it was just 20 friends in a room getting together. Like, I didn't even know you at that point. But Yo. it was just people who knew each other a little bit. Right. Through social media. Yeah. And, we were just like, what are you up to? That's what it was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we did, and everyone was like, oh, let's do another one. So we went yeah. to Daily Grind, and more people came out to that, and we're like, okay, well, let's do another one. And yeah. we went to Good, and then it was after Good Robot that we decided to brand it as the Halifax Social Network. It's not original. Right. But uh, it, says, it, it says what it needs to say. It says what it needs to say. Yeah. And then since then, I think there was the Garrison one. Uh, mm -hmm. which was like 120 people nice. came to that. And then just since then, it's just people from different walks of life uh, have started coming out. We noticed there was like 20, like 50 plus, like 50 year plus people that came to the last one. Oh, wow. wow. It's like, okay, okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah they're Mixing it, it up. Out. Yeah, yeah it's, man. It's, it's great. You've, they've got stories too. So let's hear them. That's um, dope. So it's good. And uh, it, there's a lot going on. We've got a, we've got a fun one coming up in November that I'm hosting. It's a photo meet, Insta meet uh, at the High Head in Prospect, November 10th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then we're going to go to Propeller after. They're going to hook us up with some beer. Nice. And thank you, Evie, at Propeller. There you go. <laughs> and uh, then we've got another event in, in November and then one in December. I think there's a big... Meech has got something in the works. Yeah, of course he does. Of course he does. Good. Yeah, so... And so you're going to create some promo videos for the podcast because you you got you got so much love to uh, show. Uh, I do. I've got some got some great footage already. I already have an idea of what one I'm gonna do, and then mm. the other one I've got to wait till we're done. Ooh. <laughs> then I can film my other idea. Nah, but, good. Yeah. We appreciate you for coming. We're yeah. glad to have finally graced you on the microphone. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I have to get you on here for like a full episode when you're not <laughs> so tired and we're not really trying to cram like. Well, Seven what is people. It? It's, almost, it's 11 05. Yeah, you, you, would yeah. Be, you would be toast by now, wouldn't you? I'd be in my son's bed having fallen asleep watching Spider Man, the animated series, <laughs> with him by now. And Ruth would be like, Where are you? And he's like, Gone. 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 <laughs> nah, well, thank you for coming. Yep. Um, we appreciate you. This is not the last. No, it's we, not. The we're last. only beginning. And that's what I love about the stories that you tell with Halifax Social Network is it's really just like, Hey, how you feel? What are you doing? Yep. This is what it's about. Come share. And yep. that's what, you know, what we've done on this show is be authentic, yep. be ourselves, exactly. share our stories and invite those who want to share stories and come hang and, yeah. and, and be yourself. Well, so. that's the only way we're ever going to learn, like hearing from everyone who spoke tonight and just what you were saying about what everyone was saying to, if I can like in my head summarize it, mm. is that like everyone um, is going through shit and no one is perfect and every like this world needs to be a place where we can be there for each other or you can be or you can be in environments where um you can be sensitive or recognize when people need you to be there for them too like hearing that you were feeling that way um over there while I was talking to you at that time and I and I didn't pick up on that you know I wished I had and because I would, I hate knowing that any of my friends go through that stuff, and no one should ever go through that stuff alone. And I know what it's like, and and um, you know, it's just like. Uh, so I get lost in my train of thought sometimes. But we just need to be in this. This this world is moving more and more to these extremes, um, and it's just like we need to kind of like kind of throw that off to the side and get to a point where we can just be open about and kind and generous about everything, including like, you know, sexuality, uh, race, um, or, or anything. Right. Right. All these things that seek to divide us could actually be the things that bring us all together. Right. Cause we're all, we're all human on this planet yeah. and we're all just trying to make a go of it. I don't understand why there has to be such a, a need for so much like hate. 
<laughs> I don't get it. Yep. You know, maybe it's because I was raised, but uh, it's just anyway baffling. I could go on. I'm going a philosophical. <laughs> uh, right I now. appreciate you. No, I appreciate. Laid. it. I'm getting into my deep thoughts. <laughs> well, man, that's good. Well, anyway, listen, yo, thank you for coming. We'll continue to grow together. We continue yeah. to build together. Cool. It's love always. You already know. That. Oh, and I got I got to give a special shout out to your dad. I hope oh. he's recovering well because I'm ready to beat him up on the basketball court <laughs> since his nose is fixed. You and his dad. Hooped. Yeah, yeah. His oh. dad was there the day we guys we went. Oh, yeah. was he? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I didn't okay. get to introduce you though. Oh, okay. 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 Big Papa J. Big Papa J. <laughs> Just broke his nose. He's recovering. Oh, jeez. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne, you do that? No, it wasn't me this <laughs> time. Next time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's jokes. All right, yo. Thank All right, you very cool, much. Guys. We're Sean. gonna make some magic. Right. Yo, yeah. who's that? Where's yo? Yeah. We're gonna save the love for the end. All right, get up here. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Let's check the. No candy left in that bowl, is there? There should be all kinds of candy left. The bag, the bags, oh. the bags are up there, though. It should be something in the bag, yo. Papa, Papa, she's on the mic. It's finally. <laughs> she didn't even want us to take pictures of her at at uh, Fashion Week. Well, it was all about you. No. It was, it, the whole point was to celebrate you. It was after. After we celebrate everybody. Listen, she's so humble well, already. So many, so many pictures yet to come. So, so many more. Whatever. So many I knew there was no candy left in those bags. Yeah, but you still need a picture of Par, though. One can be. One can hope. One can hope. Pavathi. <laughs> Can you hear me? times we need like that five pound bag of If our audience would shut up, maybe we could talk. Server in need. They're, I they're, should, I should rephrase that. Like just shut up the people in the audience without having to tell them to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet on the set. Havathi. Yeah, speak into the mic. Yo. Put your lips on the mic, as Charlemagne would say. <laughs> uh oh. Pause. <laughs> Put your lips on the mic. Hello, hello. Yeah, speak up. Can you hear me? I can hear you good. That's perfect. You just you just keep talking to the mic. Pavathi. So who are you and why are you here? Um, first of all, my name is Parvati. I'm probably not gonna pronounce that. Pavathi. Um Pavathi. Par with fifteen hours. <laughs> yeah, 15 hours, exactly. Yeah, yeah, perfect. You don't use that anymore. You don't use the 15 hours. I will use my. Disappointed. I'll, I will use 15 hours as soon as we stop recording. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, been following CTN for quite a while now. I really, really like what you guys do here and talk about. Been a big fan for a while. Yeah. So I said, I want to help. I want to I wanna see where I can contribute. And I said, Pick me, pick me, and then he finally did. <laughs> <laughs> and then he finally got fed up and he said, "Fine, come over. Let's let's figure Had something to. out." So I'm here. Well, and you went right to work. Jeez, help him doing at the show. We yeah. had like a family potluck. Yeah, yo. A little yeah. Weeks ago. Yeah, that was had, super fun. You brought them badass uh, cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes. Yeah, those cupcakes, Ooh, those cupcakes were like were good. Cupcakes yes, are stupid good. I know. Trouble. Next time. Where'd you get them from? So maybe they can layers. give us some free ones? Layers, oh, layers. cupcakes. Layers Shout cupcakes in Halifax? Um, on Barrington. Barrington Street. Yeah. Layers yeah. cupcakes. Yeah. Yo, make sure that you timestamp <sighs> this so we can clip this so you can tell Layers cupcakes we need some cupcakes because they're the getting podcast. free promo. Oh, so, and absolutely. just to be specific so we can make sure yes. we get the box of cupcakes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that apple pie inside oh, a cupcake <laughs> mm. changed my life okay okay we were like cutting it up into like fours five fours fours, fours and fives, fives. 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 cupcakes and fives yeah, it was yeah. stupid and every single one you cut into they're fucking was delicious different they're and all so good oh it was like every oh yeah we were like having moments with every single one everyone's like describing like, this their is moment good. no wait this is good no yeah. wait that one's yeah. good yeah so. it was a great moment so, cool. so an additional plug for layers, <laughs> they actually did my wedding cake. Really? Oh, yeah. There we go. So I remember when it was we just really a business out of her now, house. Damn it. And we met her at her house to pick out our wedding design That's crazy. cake. And now she's like killing it. So Good. 
awesome. Yeah. Who is she? Her name's Jen. I can't remember her last name. Much love to Jen. Yeah. And Layers mm. Cupcakes. Parvati. What's up? What are you doing on the team? Because you're one of our newest team members. I think we talked about this last time and we just came to the conclusion. We said everything and then we just kept quiet. Just, <laughs> that's, all we, that's all we came up with. So. Basically, Par is going to help with everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Whatever we need help with, she's going to do it. So I'll stop running off set to check the cameras because mm. Par is going to check the cameras. And I don't have to write on the topic board <laughs> mm. because Par is going to write on a topic board. Oh, yeah. Actually, we could have someone to like, post on the social media and stuff, too. So, Par, you could probably help with that. Yo, yeah. So, we're, we're yep. going to have another, me and Par are going to sit down this week and figure out more of the content strategy because we need to be more deliberate yeah. in the things that we're doing, okay? Yep. This has worked accidentally yeah. <laughs> for way too long. Yeah. I so, th- yeah. yeah. We I th- need... Go, no, go ahead. We just need to do it right. Say what yeah. you're going to say. No, I, I, I remember initially my whole plan was that I was going to manage the social media. You ain't and got no fucking time for I that. I was just like, you don't. what am I doing? So then I stopped you don't. doing it. Yeah. That's fine. That's why we got Pac. Yeah. Boy, I'm here to help. Yeah. Pac, can you tell the people a little bit about you? Um, Where do I start? Where so, do you want? I moved to Halifax two years ago. Um. I left Abu Dhabi, that was, that's where I was born, and I grew up there, but my parents are originally Indian. Um, it was a hard decision, but wanted something new out of my life, and I was kind of over the scheduled mundane life that I had back home. It was comfortable, it, it was, you know, it was home. My parents mm. are there, my, my entire, know friends group my my surroundings my everything that was familiar um was back home but i needed a change and um being raised in an indian family education is super important and there's no way around it you had to have your degrees hmm. and uh so my parents I said like well, that's plural <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, it always is there's no way of getting out of that um so my parents said well if you want to leave that's 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 cool that's great like Go explore your opportunities, but you know, studies first. So I said, okay, well, that's my sort of segue into leaving the country. And I came here to do my master's. I graduated in May. Success. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Master's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Master's in technology, entrepreneurship, and innovation. Okay. Ooh, Shout okay. out to St. Mary's University. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, that's a SMU degree. SMU yeah. yeah. degree. SMU yeah. degree. Yeah. SMU degree. And, uh, well, yeah, and I, I work full-time as an executive recruiter. Exciting. And the, you know about a little bit about recruiting. A little bit. You got to note that already? <laughs> yeah, no, she knows what's good. You yeah. Guys, well, we're going to chat later. Yep. Yeah, after the podcast, we're, we're going to have discussions. Yeah. Boom, yes. boom. So. Discussions with air quotes. Yeah. Discussions with air quotes. Yeah, I yeah, found yeah. that very interesting, that you, yeah, the recruiting thing. Alan, yeah. yeah. Yo, it, is, like, it is interesting. Um, but try to look at it. I try to look at it when you call someone and say, I have an opportunity for you. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to give them something good and you're not just trying to sell something to them. Mm. So that's how I try to see it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. And you're here. And I'm here. You're on the team. I'm on the Yay. team. Yay. Yeah, baby. We got a squad. Mm-hmm. We're rolling deep. I know, like, it's so funny because I'm here now, right now, talking to you guys. And I was telling Terrence the other day, like, to see how far you you guys have come. Because I think the first episode that I listened to was the 12th or 13th episode or something. Yeah. And to see where it is right now. 45, I yo. Know. That's, oh, my God. And you're going to hmm. come to the one full year. December 4th. I know. That's, that's wow. crazy. That's, that's actually crazy that we're... That's like a, an cool. 11 month old podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, congrats to us and congrats to the listeners and thank you to the listeners because we wouldn't be yeah. shit without Yay. these people who listen to this show every week. So, mm-hmm. much love to the folk. Much love to Pryor. You're going to help you, us make you. this shit make a whole lot more sense. And uh, you have an interest in video production too, do you not? A video production like you have interest in making videos yes, and I stuff do, i do so i reached out to terrence and i said teach me your ways master 
Mm. So he's going to teach me all the tips and tricks. Yeah, I plan to because there's a lot of video editing that goes into this podcast. And if I don't have to do it all, I'm not doing it all. Mm. (laughs) I'm just not. So that's what what we're probably going to learn. I know. And I'm super excited. Excited to be part of the team. You know what? I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How did you find the Fashion Week experience? Oh, that was actually my first time working for a fashion show Mm -hmm. or fashion week or designer and it was actually very scary when i initially when you reached out to me (laughs) oops (laughs) (laughs) you always have to spit red water across this white and blue carpet (laughs) um it was very scary at first because i was like oh my god he asked me to do this thing and i'm gonna flop in front of him and it's gonna be a disaster but um, the stories we tell ourselves. Mm-hmm. There you go. Know. It didn't. It didn't. It, of course it, not. It was like he said. Like I thought it was chaotic, but at the same time, like the experience for him was completely different. Um, so it was very exciting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And there were so many aspects of it. That was there's so many things happening at the same time. Yeah. But the fact that we pulled it off. Yeah, I thought it was it was great. I was I was hoping that it wasn't like a negative experience for you. Absolutely or anything. not. No. Okay. No, actually, it was great, and um, yeah, it was it was a completely different environment. I've I've never been part of an event like that. So. Mm. Okay. Super cool. cool. Right. I hope to be part of different other shows. Yeah, you will. Yeah, thank so. you, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Squad in the building. Squad in the building. Squatty. Where do they find you at? Um, <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram. P A with fifteen R's. Yeah. <laughs> fifteen. It has to be fifteen. It must be fifteen. That's the thing too, because I I type in like a couple of R's, and there's so many other Instagram accounts oh, with no. the same name R. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I was like, mine has fifteen. I have to count and be sure that that's mine. Yes. <laughs> Do any of them 15. look similar to you? No. Because that would be the other thing. Someone's weird. like, oh, I think I found her. And it's not even mm, <laughs> yeah. negative. Not, but 15 no. hours if you're looking for me. I love it. Yeah. Pryor, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Now get out of the chair. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, big, hunky man of love. <laughs> Bring your ass uh, over here. That's how we're introducing it. Pryor, we love you. Thank you. Yes. We love you like Yay. mad, super crazy. We're only beginning. Get yes. your ass in the seat. <laughs> Big man, get your ass in the seat. First time meeting sure. Kyler. For oh, the, yes. Uh, I, I can't believe it. It's, Hi. <laughs> I know you. It's the hubby. It is. Kyler, you want me? You need me to fix the mic for you? Yeah, it doesn't. No, I think it's all right. Ooh, you sound Ooh. really good. You just can't. You big man, man. Right. you man. Talking, right. talking to this big old mic. <laughs> big old man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy never mentions you without saying the word big. Yeah. <laughs> is this because is it rare that you feel small? I don't feel small. <laughs> this big ass man. <laughs> you're going to keep saying that. Uh, you're going to wear that out. I'm going to have to do something eventually. <laughs> what you going to do to me? Big stuff. No, I'm going to have oh, to do no. something to justify here other than just being the big guy. Yeah, yeah, well, no, we don't want you to justify being a big strike. You might get. Yeah, you just, yeah, you make this, you just talking to it. Right, right. Put your lips on the mic. <laughs> you like the power of the Lolo. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kyle, what's up, big guy? How you doing? Doing Uh-oh. all right. You're all right, uh, going on hour 15 in this building today, so oh, yeah. managing. But, oh. but we, you're the last beautiful voice on the microphone today. And damn it, your voice was made for a microphone. Yeah, you got another nice voice like yeah. these two. <laughs> I would That's listen to you to do things. Uh, I wasn't going to go there. I was not going to go there. This my is first the- comment, I not even... So my sister used to live with us. Whoa. Oh. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's a big man. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, don't the I late know show. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big man. I know. I, I know you know. Why well, do I think I picked him up in the first place? Hey. Lauren, put your lips on the mic. Talk to these people about how much you love this beautiful man. I do so much that we're going to get married next summer. 
I wish you would say that. Like, like that's like, oh, the end all be all for people being that love each other. Oh, I love that a woman just said that. It is that. not the end all be all, and it just will not be the most significant accomplishment in my life. It's not an accomplishment in my opinion. But marriage is not an accomplishment in your opinion. I don't. Do we think? Do I think that we should like tote around a big flag and be like? Good job, woman. You got married. That was a very important mm-hmm. accomplishment to your worth as being a female with a vagina. Because often it is. So, is yeah. it exciting? Yes. Mm-hmm. Will it be an epic party? Yes. Damn right. Will it be the greatest thing we ever do? No. Yeah. And like, if it is... You guys better do more yeah. exciting things. Well, here's yeah. the thing. People act like it's this finish line to some great thing, and it's the beginning, really. A lot of work that goes it's in just, just the beginning. It goes in relationships. Yeah. You know? They're worth it. And you yeah. two work together. We do. How the fuck does that work? I want to know. Manifest. I want, I want to know. Well, yeah, Grandmaster Vision, <laughs> we already know that. But how does it feel working with your lady? Well, three months in, it ain't so bad. <laughs> but, I mean, it was honestly something we always kind of figured we'd end up doing. Uh, I think it was... You know, for me, maybe more of a mental stretch, not for any particular reason other than, you know, you just don't typically do that. But uh, I know Lauren's folks work together pretty well their entire career. So, you mm. know, there's a precedent there. But honestly, how, how long were you, uh, were you at CGS before I came aboard? Year and a half? Well, if you've only been here three months, yeah, like a year and nine months. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, on one hand, felt like I was working here already. Because I heard so much about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, on the other hand, it was it was the, it was the kind of work that uh, when I learned about it via you, I was kind of jealous that I didn't find it first. So I figured eventually I'd find my way there eventually. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, opportunities aligned. I uh, spent enough years in a place that was not exactly uh, feeding my soul, if I can get into... Uh, the type of soul bearing terminology that uh, we've been using here tonight. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's about as far as I'm going to go. But uh, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll, ju- we'll just say it wasn't doing it for me. Right. So uh, yeah, the opportunity came along and, you know, there was no reason not to other than, ah, oh, you going to work with your girlfriend? Ah, oh, I couldn't do that, man. Yeah, yeah, I know you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've met her, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't really that way for us. So, oh, you know, it, uh, it, damn. I don't think we ever, I don't know about you, but I never really think of it as a thing until someone points it out as being a thing. No, I don't. I don't, because, I don't know, we work really well together, and we complement each other. Like, you know books and stuff, and I know feelings and stuff. And then, like, together, that makes good stuff. Even mm. better. Not like the book learning. Yeah, that, that should, we can make that into a webinar. We can sell that. Combining <laughs> books and stuff and <laughs> fancy word papers with feelings and new thinkings and things. And PowerPoints. Okay, so do you ever have a point where you're, you get home and you just are like, oh, that thing that happened today, let's, let's talk about that. Let's work out that thing right now from work. Or do you just say, nah, work time's over. I'm not. Yeah, how do you, yeah, when you go home. Oh, no, we, like, talk about it. Oh, you, but you're the type that want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah like, it, it, you know, have there been times where we're like, okay, we just can't talk about that anymore? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But a lot of the times we're hanging around, it's, it's like problem solving. We're problem solving, right? It's like, hmm, well, what do you think about this? Okay, could it work like blah? Mm-hmm. Yes? Awesome. No? Uh, okay. Well, what about this? It's very much like a... This guy got a problem solved brain. Oh, I, yeah, I know. Maybe, and Big maybe time. again, that's the entrepreneur thing because I think maybe that's the type of people who would have a problem with that. Because I feel like my brain is always working no matter what. So I'd be fine with it. But like, I yeah. get some people are just like, nah, I'm, I want to watch TV. I don't want to think. I don't want to do nothing else yeah. but watch TV right now. Mm. Yeah, so. well, I think we have a bit of a. <laughs> history with some of that from like you know baggage from previous gigs and it was like okay maybe too quick to come home and turn on the tv and be like i don't want to talk about it yeah Uh, so kyla what is sorry go ahead what were we gonna say let's say it's interesting you mentioned kind of the entrepreneurial mindset of always wanting to think about things because 
I myself have never really been an entrepreneur. I jumped right I jumped right into the suit and tie corporate world out of uh, university, but it was in they called it an entrepreneurial role, which basically means, you know, in the corporate world, you get no real direction, but mm-hmm. God help you if you don't hit your numbers. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, to an extent, I did I did learn some of those traits of, you know, if you're not working, you know, you're not getting as far ahead as you could be. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the care, it wasn't as big as maybe a huge exit, but, you know, when you're, when you're working for commission and you're 24, you, the more time you put in, the more you get out of it. And when the equation's that simple, you don't see the rest of it. It's, it's pretty linear. So yeah. I guess maybe in, maybe in that sense I developed it, but it was just interesting to hear you say that because I've never really thought of myself as an entrepreneur. Yeah, same here. I never did until I started to, to listen to entrepreneurs on podcasts. I'm like, well, I think I share some of those traits. And... Yeah. Like, I think that is like, that's probably why you ended up in those roles where you're doing that entrepreneurial work. Well, what the uh, hell do you actually do here at CGS? <laughs> Don't bring it up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Nobody's sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just showed up and, you know, one day never left. And, and <laughs> you, got on. So you use your big ass brain to solve problems. And learn stuff and research shit because you're a smart man in the suit and tie corporate world. And that's what they call consultants. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to steal that and put it on my LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. but quote to, it. Sandra will write it. Quote it. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of my roles based around some of the consulting and advisory services we have, uh, some business development. Um, but yeah, I kind of like that big ass brain problem solving. Put that, put that on a business card. Big ass brain problem solving, hmm. and you're you're a former football player. Because you know what, we're gonna eventually have oh, some like ex jock, yeah, 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 sports talk going on here soon. Mm. Because you, we've already had some side Working chats on it. It's yeah, 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 yeah. So toxic okay, so, masculinity, right, right. Yeah. So, so the so, beautiful thing is, sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say on the note of fo- being a former football player. Um, one of the things I do remember from uh, my days playing football at St. FX was the new breed. Oh, I was God. there. <laughs> I was the first hand witness. There. I remember two of your names. I don't remember the other three. There. That's hilarious. Your last year was my first year. Yeah, I remember oh, you and Dwayne. Ugh. And then there presumably there were three others. Yeah. You said there were. Five, Who are right? they? Uh, there was an Alberto Rodriguez. <laughs> Alberto. He was from Cuba. There was a Will Silver. I know Will. Will. And there was a Christian T. Brabshaw. I know Christian. And that was, that was our, our breed. I remember everybody. I didn't realize they were, they were all in that crew. Ugh, wow. That was our crew. Will. Bunch Will. of sh- shenanigans. <laughs> all the shenanigans happened at McNeil House, third floor. I love that you guys that went to X like have a name for your house. There were names for and, our like, houses. And rooms or floors. That's where Every my story. Uh, Every, it's I know, but like specifically. <laughs> Third floor McNeil, baby. Yeah, that's cert- where it was. Cert- certain floors have reputations, certain rooms. It's like, it's like having a noteworthy address. All the basketball players lived in the same room consistently for years. It's weird. It is weird. Probably mm. did a lot of the same girls in the same beds. No. Uh, yeah. I was going to make a comment about black light or. Something uh, like that. There was a lot of inappropriate behaviors in the places that. Nothing I can really say to refute that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, X has the history and the legacy and the notorious, infamous cloud of dirt that shines over it. For a reason, things happen on that campus that should never happen. You know. <laughs> Care for you get kicked out of the cult, man. You're I'm revealing, not in the cult. You're, you're, I don't you're have the ring. Too much. I won't be. I don't care about. No, I'm. I'm not. No. Are, are you gonna? Are you gonna open like that? Yeah. Things happen there that should never happen, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, where's, yeah, where's this leaving me? I just got here. <laughs> Dry snitching. <laughs> hey, listen. No, I just threw the lob. If you caught it and finished it, I don't uh, know. <laughs> no, that was uh. That was, a, was, long time was ago. a wild place, and it's funny, and I'm sure it'll it'll come up at some point. You know, yeah, well, you re, you, rem, you remember it a certain way, and then you know, as you get further away from it, 
you know, things don't change, but you think of them in a different way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, it's, it's far too late to open that one up. But I yeah, think we'll we get won't. There. We'll keep. So, <laughs> so before we kick you out of this seat, what exactly is your role within the podcast? Because you're, you're coming on board to be of some assistance as well. Well, that's a good question, man. <laughs> Here's my opinion. Go. Here's my opinion, because Tyler probably next to Mike listens to like all of the podcasts that mm. exist on the interwebs <laughs> and lots of different ones, all that tend to be topically relevant to the kinds of things that we want to talk about on the show. Okay. He's also very organized and methodical. So yeah. sometimes when we've touched on a topic and I come home and I'm like, oh yeah, well, we talked about this tonight. He's like, well, yeah, you talked about that with this person and this person. Like, did you build off that? And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> no <he's- laughs> Wouldn't it be great if someone was tracking these things and the things that we already touched on and the people so we knew where we could go from there and, re- re- you know, refer back to episodes and you know, right. get people in some sort of continuum of the stories that we're telling. So if you're interested, yes, that might be very helpful. That's fair to say. I'd- Probably spent most of my life consuming just a ridiculous amount of nonfiction media. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if I can, uh, I, don't know, I was going to make a Joe Rogan reference. Do it. If I can, if I can be the Brian Redband. Is it still Brian Redband? Is it Jamie? I haven't listened to Joe Rogan. Jamie in a while. sounds like a familiar name. Yeah, on Joe Rogan. The guy, guy kind of sitting there doing the googling and giving the uh, giving the background spice when they get. What's off the on dude yeah, on that'd be awesome. um, Joe Budden's podcast? Erickson. Erickson. Yeah, Erickson does it. Look that up. Look that up, Erickson. <laughs> hey, Kyler, look that shit up. Well, you probably wouldn't look it up. You'd just be like, Kyle hey, Kyler, what's this fact? scratch his brain and, and he'd, he'd like, just come out. Blah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. This is, this is the man that, and I so appreciate it, and sad that Jeopardy no longer comes to Canada. <gasps> like, when we're watching Jeopardy. I bet, he, yeah, he would win. He gets, like, minimum 85% of the questions right. Jeez. And usually the final Jeopardy. Wow. I know, I know. And I'm like, I can't even read the category. <laughs> seriously. What is... Seriously. Uh, Jeopardy, Jeopardy Canada came to Ottawa, I think, two, two weeks after I moved away, and I'm still choked about it. <laughs> I would kill that. Like, Trebek, call me. <laughs> oh. um, I know Trebek listens to the Change the Narrative podcast, yeah. damn it. So Break it. make All sure that he gives you a call. Stereotypes of not being smart. I know. Yeah. Listen, yeah. it's why you're such an enigma to me. Yeah. It's a great man. He's got a great woman. Mm. You motherfuckers hold each other down. That's just what needs to happen. Yep. <laughs> um, you don't. You're not a social media guy. Not at all. Not really. Um, Mike. Yeah, at least as an Instagram account. I'm sorry that I didn't let you plug your mm. stuff before I kicked you out of the chair, but I want you to come back to the microphone and plug it before the show's over. Will you do that? Okay, good. Kyle, do you have anything left you want to say? Because Sean is like. He's standing up now because he was falling asleep on a coach. <laughs> no, I think uh, they're going to start uh, flicking the lights on and off here in a minute if we stick <laughs> around. So we, uh, we better tie this thing up. I love long yeah. shows. So just believe that if we can record earlier in the evening, I'll keep us for two and a half hours every night. I think people would listen to this shit. I, I, I would. I love well, it. Well, we'd be getting paid for it at that point, in which well, case we could sit around for two and a half hours a night and record. Listen, Lawrence, like, we need to get to this bag. All right, fine, then. We get to the <laughs> bag, to then. The Shit. Um, oh, you, well, oh, sorry. No, you finished with because I want to close out with what I'm going to say. You got anything else you want to add? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I love this guy. He's great. Thank you. Yay. You're oh, here. Big man. This is a big dude. Sounds like a big hug. <laughs> I know that just, just like boom. that just felt <laughs> big. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, just, just, just it makes you feel small. Just, I know, like I haven't shit, felt like that in a long small. time. That's a big ass bunch of man. Over ever here. ever since my high school growth spread, <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't felt like that. Yeah. Yeah, but look, the yes. thing that I wanted to say was the Coast um, Best of Gala is this Thursday. So there's a gala. Yeah, there's an, like an award ceremony thing that what? where they announce the winner. So Ugh. they won't. Should we go to that? That's what I'm saying. I'm going. 
Oh shit, we should probably so go to So that's what I say. We should talk where? about it. It's 7.30 to midnight and uh, we'll find out if CTN is on the list. Oh man. We'll find out practice. if Dwayne Jones is designer of the year. And if Terrence yeah. Taylor is videographer of the year. Hey, yes. Talk about it. So yeah, November 1st. Any or all of those would be very cool. Any yeah, of yo. them. Yeah. So yeah. like well, gotta be is pretty cool anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. Now we the fact that the fact that it was we all was on here in the same year, I think that's a big deal, yo. Just yeah. to be be recognized by the people as people doing shit, I think that's a big deal. So we're going to keep building though. But I think that also speaks to setting intention, and I think that's something business people do. I I personally set the intention to get on that list. There you go. Get CTN mm-hmm. on the list. There you go. And mm-hmm. it happened. So there you go. We keep doing our shit. Change the narrative podcast, CTN podcast, Facebook, Instagram, CTN podcast on Instagram, and Spotify. Hey, we on Spotify. Change the narrative podcast on Spotify. If you're not on, if you're a Spotify user, get on that shit. This is an excuse for all those people who didn't have iPhones. If you don't have an iPhone or Spotify. Mm-hmm. The fuck year you living in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to put you it got bluntly, war? yeah. Come on, yo, pick just get one of them. <laughs> so just find us on Apple Podcasts. We there too. Spotify. We there too. We'll be back on YouTube now because we have all our recordings. Bro, you know I couldn't upload a a, a video from Europe. Why? Do you know how slow the internet oh, is? Oh, yeah. right. right. Okay. I had one, like, three gig file that I tried to upload because it was one of the courses. 28 hours. Fuck. Oh, man. One file. Well, actually, you know what? I don't even think it was that long, but it was one file. It took 28 hours to upload. I said, I'm out of here. What y'all doing over there? They over there burnt. Listen. <laughs> We're not going to talk about them. <laughs> Listen. Um, Lo, where you at on the Instagrams? She's not. On the internet. Ain't. Sorry, on the internet. It's a long <laughs> night, yo. Come on. Uh, well, you can find us at Placemaking4G, uh, at Common Good for All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne, Dwayne. At R Pays Me everywhere Instagram, Twitter, R Pays Me on Facebook, and um, LinkedIn. If you add me on LinkedIn and you don't know me, I'm not accepting. <laughs> That's Sorry. fair. That's pretty fair. <laughs> Pretty fair. Terrence J. Taylor on Instagram. Watch CTM on Instagram. TerrenceTaylorMedia.com. Mike, hop on there. I'm at One Red Cat Media on pretty much everything. It's all spelled out. So if you know how to spell one, then you're pretty much set. Uh, and if instead on Instagram, Instagram is where I like to be. So if you go on Twitter, it's just a garbage fire. But on Instagram, you can also check me out at, at One Red Mike if you want to see pictures of me doing yoga in a pair of pink camo tights. So that's that. Oh my God, amazing. It's actually, it's, it's there. It is that's true. That's amazing. Par, she's on Instagram, PA with 15 hours. Sean McMullen, you're there on, it's Sean McMullen, right? On IG? Sean D? Sean D. McMullen. Incredible photographer. Yeah, he's, yes. oh, he's, he's flames, bro. Mm-hmm. And uh, Halifax Social Network, check that out. Sandra C. H. A. N. N. E. B. O. H. M. A. You should it. see how excited Sandra gets when I spell the name right. That's how I know people butcher your name. They must. Yo, they must. Uh, 10 Day, much love for coming. He's not paying attention, but that's okay. Mike has a weird <laughs> hat on, but it's cool. Rep. Uh, love Canada. We're going to talk about next week. Sorry, Kyler, thanks to you with your big beard and your big hugs. Big man. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The only topic we didn't get to was um, the legalization of cannabis in Canada. Oh, yeah, right. It's actually legal. So we're just going to leave that for next week. We're at two and a half hours. God damn it. I love this motherfucking show. I'm happy as fuck that we're back. We're not missing another motherfucking week. I'm so thankful for all these people who I actually is like super, super, super fuck with. I love you guys. I love the, I love these two people that are sitting at this table with me. I love everybody in this fucking room for coming through and showing love. God damn it. We're going somewhere, motherfuckers. And we're going to the top. Peace we and love, peace. bitches. Bye. Woo. Everyone go to sleep. <laughs>